Hello and welcome back to Crime and Justice. Tonight, I know a lot of us, you have seen the interviews with Jen Soto. So, I just thought we'd go over them again. And... Because there's too many, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, inconsistencies. From one interview to another, and then you've got the police interviews. And that one interview, well, it wasn't an interview, but it was an interview when she's been transported by the police to the press release. That would be on the Wednesday after Mag Mag Magdalene went missing. Um, so, too many inconsistencies to me, and how she seems to be backpedaling, backpedaling, because she knows what's been said, and all this lot now, so she, it's like she did a bit of backpedaling, but it doesn't help her case in, that, in, my, in my eyes. So, the first one we're looking at is the very first interview we knew of. We knew there'd be police interviews. We knew that. But they hadn't released them at the time. But now they have. So, we're going to look at the one where... What was the TV company? Uh, I'll have to look. With WFTV, channel only online, okay? Now, I'm not sure if this was the first one or the second one, because she did two. So, but one's got like six months posted six months ago, and one's got posted five months ago. This is the one that's been posted as six months ago. So, this was done... Well, I'd say those both done round about the same time. I'd say those both done in the same day. And I think this was on the Tuesday. Right? But then again, I'm not sure because... Well, it could have been Tuesday daytime because Tuesday evening, after she spoke to the police detective from Sex Crimes Unit, which didn't seem to bother her one bit. Um, she had to move out of that part, that house. So it had to be either sometime Tuesday morning. So it's hard to say, but I know it wasn't Tuesday evening because she wasn't allowed back in that house after she did that interview with the police detective. Right, so this is 15, well, we're not watching it all because part of it's got Stefan Stearns in. I don't want to, to look at him tomorrow. No, I have got, i managed to get some files, police records and things like that on him. And the one with the 840 odd pages, a lot of that on, on the app I used was has been redacted. So I should imagine a lot of them were the photos and the evidence, pictures and all that lot. Right. But there's some interesting stuff on there. So we're going to watch this anyway. So let's go. So I can have your Look. first, your last name, and spell them both out for me. Okay. Jennifer Soto, J E N N I F E R S O T O. Mother. Hi, Julia. Jennifer, tell me how you feel right now. I feel like I can't breathe. You know what, Georgia? When I do my tags, when I do the tags for my lives and my videos, I've now started putting in. Hashtag arrest Jen Soto. 
That's how much I believe she should be pressed. Charges should be pressed against her. She was like, she was the sort of mother that didn't, um, wasn't bothered about her daughter. That's, that's the feeling I get. You know what I mean? It's like, she's just, oh, she's just in the way. But yeah, I, I hashtag, um, hashtag arrest Jen Soto, knowing all my videos I put out, everything. She looked past the red flags, hmm. But the one where which we're going to be listening to where she's only transporting, being transported in a police car, right, she's talking to family members on the phone. <laughs> and it's so funny. And she's so she said, Oh well, Stefan's in another car behind because that car's bigger. No, it's because they wanted to keep you two separate so they could talk to you. You know what I mean? Without him looking over your shoulder or oh, you looking over his shoulder. Yes, I agree there, Georgia. So we're going to, as I said, we are going to look at these interviews. And you know me, I will stop in between when I hit a red flag. So you might hear me being a bit, uh, a bit of sarcasm coming out of me tonight. Because this is the mother of the year. Did you know that? The mother of the year is on, the, on my channel. Not. Christ, if I had a mother like her, I'd be running around the woods myself. All I keep thinking about is, where is she? Is she safe? Is she okay? But we're, we're all a wreck. My entire family is a mess. We're just so worried. When did you first realize, or when did you follow Miss McCoy? We filed a missing report. Uh, we called the police at like 4.45 uh, yesterday, uh, 4.45 p.m. But she actually went missing early that morning around between 8.45 and 9 o'clock in the morning she went missing. Um, we had dropped her off close to the school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Now, I'll tell you what else tells me a lot about Jen and how, how much she thought about her daughter. The fact that their father, the biological father, has Maggie's, Madeline's ashes. Not the mother. Not the mother. She didn't go to the public. Like they had two funerals sort of thing on the same day, I believe. And one was like more of a public funeral, and the other one was more family, family and friends. She didn't go to the first one. Now, I'd be at every one of mine if it was my child. I don't care what the public was saying. That is my, that would, I'd be saying, that's my daughter. My daughter, I'm burying. You know what I mean? And she couldn't, she only went to the one. And she didn't even keep the ashes, the father's got them. It's took them back home to Texas. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that until I watched the interview he gave. And I went, wow, it was true what I heard. So. Too sad. This is such a sad case and it should not have happened. And people say, well, perhaps this is how... We've been talking about a case like this. We'll highlight to other parents what to look for, right? No. It doesn't highlight nothing to those parents because those parents aren't watching YouTube channels like this. You know what I mean? They don't care about crime, true crime and all this lot. They don't even care about their own children. So why, how can we educate those who need to be educated when they're not even watching any of these channels. 
anyway, let's get back on with this uh, interview. Sorry. Oh, Sorry about that. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Um, Pardon me, Jen. What was that? We dropped her off at school. Pardon? Do you want to rewind a little bit on that, Jen? Do you want to rewind? Let's see. She does. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to share. You can share uh, whatever you feel comfortable. The truth? Sharing. I know you had conversations with detectives. Um, not sure what that conversation is. But... Why is this playing up? God. Look at mine, we've got my bad weather. I almost had to clear night, but we haven't got no rain or wind. Oh, God. This is Jim Hedgy. I can sit here all day on my laptop, on the internet, watching TikToks or doing something else. As soon as I come live, this starts. Bleeping annoys me. Is this not? Hold on, I'll go back out because it, for some reason it had it had stopped completely. My even my mouse wasn't wasn't working on it. Oh God! Let's put this up. Oh. Let's have a look. This is it. Hold on. Hold on. Let's just get back up on there. But this will keep happening. It will keep happening over and over again. Because lessons lessons aren't learned. Right, let's see if it'll work again now. Sharing that would put the awareness out there. Yeah, she was uh, spotted walking uh, by the church, by the middle school uh, on the cameras. They saw her hang out in the parking lot for a little bit and then get up and leave. They didn't see a vehicle or anything else. They just saw her walk away uh, around 9 a.m heading towards the school, but she never made it. Um, I swear to God, my internet keep playing up tonight. I'm going to give my internet supply one mouthful phone call tomorrow. I mean, it's not showing my, anything wrong with my internet. It's showing my internet fine. So I don't understand this. What has the school said? The school. Yes. Um, that they're doing everything they can. They've given me all their resources. The principals called me, looked at those cameras. Um, I don't think. Ah, uh, yes, my internet's playing up. The cameras is too far away from the sidewalk. Everything is too grainy, so they can't see specific faces. Um, but they've looked. Um, I'm just waiting to hear anything else from them. Is this normal behavior? Not to at all. To just not show up or call or text or anything? Not at all, no. This is what that, that person at the school, at the church, which is very grainy, but he's got black shorts on and a green top. Exactly what she said what Maggie was wearing. Right? Now, we know that isn't Maggie. 
We know that isn't Maggie. So, and there's been no report of another young girl coming forward or a mother coming forward and saying, that was my daughter. That was my daughter you saw walking away on the camera. You know what I mean? No one's come forward. So I'm wondering, but there's a, I'm still a bit stuck on this. If what I'm thinking, she was dressed up in the green top and black shorts and white crocs, right? Walking away from the church, right? How would she get back home? Because they've logged every movement Stephen's made. They've logged every movement he made. So how would she get back home if that was the case? And that's the only snag I've got when people when when I say she could have been that person dressed up in the shorts and green top and white crocs. Because from a distance it would probably look like Madeline. You know what I mean? Because it's very grainy, it's at a distance, it's not close up. Plus, Stefan didn't drop her off in the car park. He dropped her down the road from the car park because he tur- he'd done a U-turn to go back to McDonald's and she said, no, she didn't want any McDonald's. Right? So he pulled over and dropped her off down the road from the church and then he said, I saw her through the rear mirror walking up towards the school. So why would she have been going into this church area? You know what I mean? I know she was early, but you wouldn't do that, would you? You'd just make your way to school. But we know it wasn't Maggie. So who was he they saw on that video that time in the morning? Um... She, from time to time, she will leave her cell phone at home accidentally, and that's actually what happened yesterday. She left her phone at home. She went to school. <sighs> um, but that happens from time to time. She's got ADHD. Uh, her memory, <laughs> she's very forgetful. Um, so, yeah, there's no way to track her right now because I have, well, the detectives now have her phone. Uh but this isn't normal behavior, no. What was the last thing, I guess, that the conversation that you two had, you and your daughter? Um, we spoke about her birthday party. She had a birthday party on Sunday. Uh, she had a great time. Uh, I couldn't make it because I was working. But she had an amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I I told her good night. And um... Talking of gifts, Jane. What did you buy your daughter for her 13th birthday? A 13th is a milestone in any child's life because you're going from a young child into your teens. You know, she's now a teen. So what did you buy your daughter for her 13th birthday? I understand from what I've heard. You didn't buy her nothing. Yeah, that was it. I... I... I was the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, but yeah. 13? She's 13 years old. Yes. 13, Madeline? Madeline. Madeline. Um, what are you thinking right now? In my heart, I feel like somebody took her. This isn't like her to just pick up and run away um, or just not go to school. Um, you know, I don't know what to think. Friends, the friends' parents, you've contacted and everyone. went through every single person? Everyone that we know that she knows. We've contacted them all, reached out to them. The parents have gone out to search and look for her as well. And we haven't come up with anything yet. I've seen a lot of posts on uh, Facebook, um, Hunter's Creek, rants and raves, and 
what have you? Did people um, say that they were going to conduct some type of like search party or anything? Uh, a lot of people have asked me to volunteer. Like if there is one, if they, if they can do one, um, there I have people passing out flyers, going to every store in that vicinity, gas station, church. Um, I think people people were being stopped in the street this morning in front of the school to see if they've seen anything, if they've heard anything. My family is, they're going all out right now. Um, yeah. I know as a mother, you have a lot. Your family's doing a lot, aren't they, Jen? What did you do? Oh, let's think. Yeah. You stayed at home. Okay. Well, you stayed in a, at the hotel after the Tuesday, because Tuesday you had to move out of the house, right? Because you had forensics going in and all this lot going in. So you stayed in the hotel or whatever. You didn't look, did you? It's going on in your brain um, so much. to bring her back home. What have what the, the law enforcement told you that you are able to share? I mean, that they're doing the best they can. Uh, they've had detectives come out, interview us. They took a piece of her clothing for the canine dog to see if they can sniff her out. I'm not sure when that's being done. Um, Wow. Do you have any inkling where she possibly could be? Like if you would say, okay, last time um, I went to work and came back, she was at Jane's house or, or, or Sabrina's house. And maybe I forgot to check that house or she played at this park one week and maybe she went back there or something like that. We've looked everywhere we could have thought and anywhere she would have been. Um, she would have known to wait for me at the school. Um, but we did check where if she could have walked. Um, my mom's office is close to the school. We checked there. We checked the walking paths that she could have taken. We've checked all of her friend's house. I, I think we've checked everywhere I could think of, honestly. What do you think? Um, oh, gosh, I just had to tip my tongue. What was she wearing? She was last seen wearing a green hoodie, black shorts, white Crocs, a black Jan Sport backpack with gray hibiscus flowers on it. Well, actually, you say she was wearing black shorts, green sweatshirt, white Crocs, right? Which is seen in the grainy photo by this church. But Stefan was actually right, wasn't he? Because he said, and we're going to look at those interviews, those first initial, in, when the police turned up on the night, uh, he said she was wearing jeans. And you said, no, no, she was wearing black shorts. But what did they find you in, Jane? Oh, yeah, jeans. And you said, this is not like her. Not at all. To run away, an argument, anything like that to provoke her? She's never done anything like this, no. And we haven't had any arguments recently to have this outcome. What school? Hunter's Creek Middle School. Tom, any questions? No. Is there anything that you think our viewers would need to know about the way you're feeling, the way the family's feeling, Madeline? We are desperate for any answers, anything that you can do to help. I'm here for it. Just please, if, if you see my daughter, just please bring her home. I just hope you're okay, Maddie. I hope you're safe. I hope you're not hurt. Whoa. I just hope she's okay. When um, when did you notice that she was missing? Because this was at the beginning of the, the morning. Um, she got dropped off in the morning. We did not notice until 
after school pickup at four at four o'clock when I went to go pick her up and she wasn't at school. So we're going in twenty four hours now. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, but you sat outside that school from three o'clock till four. By ten past four, she hadn't come out. So because there's parents behind you, which I'm sure they could have gone around you. I'm sure they could have drove around you. You drove away instead of going into the school and finding out where your daughter was. Hmm? Because that's what I would have done. I would not have left that school until I knew where my child was. I would have found the police from the school. Which would have been, what, quarter past four by then? And not, what, quarter to five, five o'clock? Before you phone the police? Nothing. No word. No text message. No messages anywhere from her. I've looked at all her social medias. I've looked at all her games she could have played with. Any, any app. No weird conversations. No, nothing strange. Everything was conversations with just normal friends or us. Did she knows how to get home by herself? As if, like, let's just say, take it to take a bus or an Uber or something like that. She would know how to get home alone, correct? I'm not sure. I don't know if she would know how to get home. Maybe, I mean, if someone, I'm thinking if someone got in the car with her and, and if she pointed the way, what roads, she probably could figure out how to get. But, like, does she know? full address i don't think she, i don't think she does which would give me the which i mean it just puts in my brain that she always comes home with with someone she always comes so home with there's me. no need for her to really exactly. learn okay and you said no time i think that was everything oh. all right the first question is if i can get your first and They're last name and spell them both out for me not watching him no well i'm not watching him his turn will come. His turn will come. Oh, and believe me, I got quite a bit on him. Right. Um, where's that interview gone? Oh, yes. Is this the? Yeah. This is the interview I find fascinating. Hi. Oh. Hold on. Uh, because the way he behaves in the background, okay? It's his behaviour in the background. And she seems a bit calmer in this interview. So, this was done online because she isn't at the house. Right? So, and it was only like nine minutes, there, six minutes long. Um, Jen, go ahead and, and tell us what's going on with Maddie. Well, um, Monday morning, we took her to school. We dropped her off close to school, across the street from a church. Correct that again, please, Jen. We, we. Church, which is very, it's right next to the school. Um, she crossed the street, um, and walked to school, what we thought walked to school. Um, my boyfriend who drove her to school, walk, drove away at that point. Um, it was seen on video footage that she hung out in the parking lot of the church for a few minutes and then got up and walked. Yes. 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 You just sit there and get comfy in the background. We know you're watching her. We know towards the school, but she never made it from that walk from, and that was around 9 a.m. when she got up. Uh, she never made it to school after that. Um, it's right next to the school. I don't know why she didn't make it. I don't know if something happened on her walk along the way or if she got taken, but she never made it. And that um, was the last anyone seen of her or heard from her? Yes. Um, I went to pick her up after school um, and she wasn't there. Um, so I started driving around, maybe thinking she took a walk 
maybe she decided to walk to my mom's office, which is pretty close to the school as well. I drove around and I didn't see anything. I drove back to the school. The school was closed. I emailed one of her teachers. They confirmed that she was absent all day. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that message that you sent to your teacher, to that teacher. Let's talk about that show again, right? Um, oh, well done. I did write it down. Yes, you called, you said, I'd like to, I think it's in one of these interviews, you actually said the time, I think it's in the, the interview she did when the police first meet up with them at the mum's office. But actually, you didn't message that teacher till 5.26pm. Why was that, Jen? That was over an hour. Well, an hour and 26 minutes after she was supposed to have left school. An hour and 26 minutes. 5.26. He told us in the interview that the first he heard anything was wrong was when you messaged him at 5.26. At that point is when I called 911 because I realized something was truly wrong. Have um, you heard from like any of her friends? Has she been active on any social media? Oh, dang. I'm sure you called 911 at 4.45. So how could you call 911 after you spoke to the teacher when you didn't phone him to 5.26? She hasn't been active on social media. None of her chats, none of her games. Uh, we did contact all her friends. None of them had seen her Monday or heard from her. Um, yeah, there's no update. Uh, and I have to ask this, and I know I, I hate doing it. Do you know to say Domino in this show, she's a lot calmer. Like in that last interview we just watched, she was like, her legs were going, her hands were going. Right? She was so... And she was really anxious in that interview. Very anxious, I found. Because I've been in a situation where one day I had someone coming from the housing to see me and it was in the morning and I was on medication at the time and I went to my daughter I said, I won't take the medication tonight because I won't be up in time for when that lady comes tomorrow. So I didn't take my medication the night before. And I'm not joking, all the, way, all the time she's there, my legs are going, I'm up, I'm down, I'm sitting, I'm walking, I'm in the kitchen, I'm in the living room. I'm in the bed, popping in and out and whatever. And this woman must have thought, what the hell is she on? Because I could not keep still. And that was my anxiety then. Doing it, but is she the type that would run away? Has this happened in the past or anything? Has she ever threatened to run away? Never. She's never, ever mentioned anything like this before. And she's not the type to want to do this. Um... She did accidentally leave her phone on Monday, um, which is kind of normal for her. She's got ADHD and very forgetful. Um, so she left her phone at home, so there's no way to trace her. They tried tracing her school laptop, um, but that's off, so it's not pinging to anything. Jen, what what is your fear? I know you mentioned she's on games and stuff. Do you think she could have like met somebody and tried to meet up with them? From she's open to us she's open with us about you know if she's got a crush with anyone and she told us she had a crush on someone at school um and i looked at their messages nothing was weird i look, looked at all of her messages all of her deleted messages oh and i bet uh your partner behind you is watching everything you say and how you react and i think he's watching really like the idea that your daughter had a crush on someone else oh dear Nothing seemed weird. It didn't seem like she was talking to anyone. Um, so I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like she may have been taken um, because this is not like her at all to just disappear and not tell us, not let us know where she's going or who she's with. Um, yeah. What What are you getting from law enforcement? Are, I mean, are they actively searching for her? I mean, what, what happens now? I mean, especially that she doesn't have her phone with her. Um, 
So as far as I know, they're conducting a search around the school, behind the school. There's a Shingle Creek. There's a, a wooded path area that you could walk. Uh, it's a hiking path. They are going back there with their canine dogs. Uh, they've taken a piece of her clothing to see if they can trace her scent. Um, they're also taking their own vehicles. I'm not sure what type of vehicles, but they're going into the woods to search for her. Um, but I don't feel like that's going to find anything right now. We've had people all day on that trail sending us photos to see if anything there looks familiar and like her personal belongings and nothing is hers. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure where to go from here. I'm just contacting the news to get the word out, to get some help because I'm desperate. I, I'm a wreck right now. You know what's so funny? He's sitting there watching her, right? And we're sitting here watching him. I'm not watching her. I'm watching him in the background. Watching him sit there cracking his fingers and everything. No. So you think that she's been taken against her will? I do think so, yes. As a mom, you know, what is your, what's your mother's intuition telling you right now? I'm trying to hope for the best, but I'm just, I'm scared for her. I want her to be okay. I want her to be safe. I don't want, to, I don't want her to come back home. I, I just, I just want her back. Whatever that means. Just, I just want her back. Are you getting any updates from law enforcement? You want it back that bad. Right. Even when you do get her back, what do you do? You let her ashes go to her father. I'm not saying it's bad that the father's got the ashes. I'm not. But why didn't you want to keep the ashes? And I mean, yes, they're searching that small area, but have they gotten any hits on any scent or anything like that? They haven't let me know anything. They haven't updated me since I spoke to them this morning. I've contacted them to get some information or to give them some leads, but I've heard nothing back. And Jen, there's no way that she just being, you know, a teenager was like, maybe had a fight with you or an argument with you and was like, you know what, I'm going to go hang out at so-and-so's house and teach her a lesson. You know, could that be a scenario? I don't believe so. We actually haven't gotten into a fight in like a few weeks or arguments or anything like that. If anything, on Sunday, she celebrated her 13th birthday with my entire family and she had the best day. She, she was so happy. She showed us all her gifts. Um, she was, she's just a happy girl and she showed it on, on Sunday night when she went to bed. She was so happy. So, you know, she had the best day. I just, you know, there was no there was no moment in that evening from when she got home from the party that she had her phone or had the laptop. She went straight to getting ready and went to bed. So I know she didn't have any conversations with anyone. She didn't make plans with anyone. I didn't, I didn't see any of that. So yeah. She spent the whole Sunday celebrating her 13th birthday. Was her 13th birthday on that Sunday or that was just like the, the time you guys were celebrating? That was the time we were celebrating. Her birthday was on Thursday, the 22nd. Who was celebrating, Jen? It wasn't you. You wasn't there. But that's just so heartbreaking to be celebrating her 13th birthday and then the very next day. She's that's gone. the last you, you see her, you've seen of her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where where do you go now? Are, are you gonna go out there and, and search or look or what, what is your are you sticking by the phone? Are you you know, what are you doing? I'm staying at home, staying by the phone, hoping she just appears. Um, I know my entire family is out looking. They've all uh, spread a bunch of flyers. They've gone. I, I've had people contact me that they've gone to the international airport to spread flyers to Amtrak to Greyhound. Just any way that if someone's taken her and they're trying to take her, just to show her face, just to make sure you know she's not being taken against her will 
And you mentioned ADHD. Was there anything else maybe mentally going on or that, that you knew of? Um, she does suffer from anxiety. And once upon a time, she was diagnosed with autism. Uh, we had her re... What's the word? Brain pain? Re-evaluated. Okay. We had her re-evaluated um, a few months ago, actually. And they told us, no, she didn't have autism, but she did have some autistic traits. She did have ADHD, some autistic traits, but not autism. So I'm not sure where to leave with that because one doctor said she did and one doctor saying she doesn't. And I don't know. She's just. Well, ADHD is a form of autism because it's different forms, different forms, right? And I know for a fact my grandson, I've got two grandsons, and one is on the is all on the spectrum. And my other grandson is being assessed. And we're waiting for he's got waiting for this appointment to come through to get him assessed, right? And I've been saying for years, I believe he's got ADHD. I believe he's got ADHD because he's on the go twenty four seven, right? I, I had a running joke when he was little. Can you take the batteries out? Just so we calm down, so we get some peace of a bit of quiet for five minutes. But it's not so bad now. He does. He, he knows when he needs time out. He knows when he needs his time out to himself, and he'll go off and have his quiet time. So he knows now when he needs quiet time. He just goes to my room or his own bedroom. Right, and he'll go sit in there with his tablet or even get me to put the TV on and he'll have time out. So he knows now he's got older, but when he was a baby, he didn't realise he needed time out. Chill out time. It was, oh no, I'm on my batteries here. I'm going to go and go and go and go and go. Yeah, well, it's okay. You know what I mean? So it is a form of autism, but on a different, total different spectrum of it. Right, when my other grandson is so, is so, is a lot calmer, right, and he'll go and play on his own, he'll go upstairs and watch his tablet, and he goes to bed when his mum tells him, he'll go up to bed, she'll put the TV on, on a weekend she don't let him watch the TV no more on the week because he wasn't going to sleep. So you know, you can only watch it on a Friday and Saturday night on the night, you know, and he'll go to sleep then. But Ellis is like, you're going to go to sleep, Ellis? No, I'm not tired. I am. So in the end, now, he'll lie in my bed and I'll say, I'm going to bed, Ellis. I'm going to sleep. So I roll over and go to sleep. Then nine times out of ten, I'll get smacked in the face, side of the face with his tablet. <laughs> Like saying, like just sort of like saying, put it on charge, Grant. I'm going to sleep now. I'm going really. So, or otherwise, he'll just leave it on the bed or on the side, or he'll go into his own bed and whatever. Now, so it's getting better. In the middle, I guess she because she does have some tendencies, but socially she's pretty great. So I'm not sure. And with the video that you were able to see whenever your boyfriend dropped her off, where where was that? What Like, which video? Was that a surveillance camera? It was a surveillance camera from the church, uh, Peace Church, right next to Med uh, Hunters Creek Middle School. And do you have that video? I don't have that. Um, they didn't show me. They wouldn't show me. It was actually... They can't, they, my sister was the one at location, and they were letting her know what they saw on camera. Okay. Uh, they didn't show it to any of us. Got it. Okay. Jen, is there anything else that you'd like to, to add? <sighs> Jen, I'd like to know, Jen, when was this interview done? Because if this interview was done Tuesday... We know you've seen that video then because it's on the police interview that he goes, oh, can you just, can you just make this out? And he shows you on his phone and you go, well, it's very grainy. It's not very clear. I can make out some green. 
And that was on the Tuesday. So, hmm. You haven't seen the video? Huh. Right. Please, 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 if you have any information, contact me, contact law enforcement. Um, any any information helps. Um, Maddie, if you see this, please come home. Please be safe. I love you very much. If you have my Maddie, please just let her come home. We just want her home. Uh, I want to watch. There's one that just come up. Yeah, um... Where is it? Uh... Let's watch this one first. Let's just watch this one. Because this now, is with breaking news. Welcome back to Good Day Orlando on this Friday morning. It is good to see you this morning. I'm Danielle Knox. We do indeed start with breaking news here at this 930 half hour mark. So we want to get right out to Fox 35's Amanda McKenzie. She is live this morning from outside the Osceola County Jail. And Amanda, we know that there has been some maneuvering. What happened? Well, just in the past few minutes, we were outside of the Osceola County Jail as Stephen Stearns was transported from the Orange County Jail here to Osceola County. We were right here as he was taken out of the patrol car and brought inside to be processed. Then he was brought quickly back out. I was able to shout several questions to him about Maddie. At one point, he was shaking his head from left to right as if saying no, but did not want to look at us or acknowledge us or answer any of our questions. He was then driven Seven, to the back Maddie? here where there is this fence and he was brought into the back. You can hear me shouting some of those questions in that video. Stefan Stearns did look tired and he did look some, somewhat quiet. We do know that he has asked for an attorney in this case. He has not admitted to anything. He refused to go to the courtroom yesterday for his first appearance. It does remain to be seen if this is just a transfer of charges to Osceola County or if there could be new charges pending. That is something we're going to continue to check on throughout the day now that he is being booked here at the Osceola County Jail. Reporting live this morning, Amanda McKenzie, Fox 35. Right, so there's that one. There's another one I wanted to see. From after school. Oh, no, no, no. Um, And. Right. Anyway, so. We've got those two. Those were the first two interviews we knew of, right? And then the videos of them, of the police camp was released, which I've got in my downloads. So we'll go to my downloads and we'll find them. <sighs> All right. Go if you to look at my downloads, you can know what cases I'm working on. <laughs> right. right. Let's see. Is this the first? I think this is the first one. The first part of it, anyway. Like yeah, this is the first part of it. Okay, so let's just go wider so you can see it first. And with those first two interviews, right, now we know they had to move out, leave that house on the Tuesday because they had people going in there and it was going to be all taped off and everything because forensics was going in there in the morning on the Wednesday. So, they needed the house cleared. Um, so, I'd like to know where those two interviews are going. Because you look at the demeanour in her, in the first interview, with what she's shaking, her legs were going, uh, she didn't know where to look, her eyes, were up, her eyes were down, her eyes were left, right. She was all over the place, right? You know, I've been there, I've been in a position where you didn't know, I didn't know where to go, where to, where to look, where to stand, where to sit. You know what I mean? I've been in that position. So, and that is a, that was my anxiety kicking in. 
And that was just because I didn't take my medication the night before. Because if I had, I wouldn't have been up for 9 a.m. 9 in the morning when this woman was coming. So, um, what was I saying? So, I'd like to know when those interviews were done. One was done online, obviously. The second one we watched was on an online one. But the first one was where they was in the house talking to her. So was they on the Tuesday? I, I doubt if they was on the Monday. So they've got to be on the Tuesday. Because on the Tuesday night then they had to move out. Because Stefan's father come down, drove down at 12 o'clock midnight. Around about midnight Tuesday. Drove down and he said he got down there for about 3 o'clock, 2.45, 3 a.m on the Tuesday, on the Wednesday morning, all right, so, uh, so I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out when they've been done, because that second one, that other one we watched, she was much calmer, had she took some medication, because she was so much calmer, Yes, she was upset, but she's calm. She wasn't shaking. Her legs weren't going, her arms weren't going, her head, her face, her eyes weren't all over the place. She was calm. So had she took some medication. This is when the police first arrived at the grandmother's place of work. They said, uh, it looked like five or six. Five or six kids at the park. All right. Yeah. Give me a second, bro. Hey, I, Go ahead. Let me finish up with this and I'll give you a call. Really should you walk in for walking out to whoever needs to I'm currently working uh possible signal late. Can you can I hold off on that? Twenty six. Of course. Uh, do they speak English? Yes, I okay. This is mom. This is mom? Okay. Hi there. Hey there. Hey there. What's going on? So, my daughter was dropped off close to school this morning, but never made it. I went to the school. I'm sorry, one second. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Are we looking for another kid or we have a kid? Looking for another one. Uh, I'm trying to get there right now. Okay. So she was supposed to be dropped off at school, didn't make it to school. Didn't make it to school. I went to pick her up from school today okay. and she never came out. They, they announced it over the speaker and I'm just like, maybe she walked here because sometimes she'll walk here to this office. Mm -hmm. Came here, nothing. I went back to the school, they were closed. I got a notice, an email from the school saying she was absent, but I also messaged her teacher and he looked at her entire attendance today and saw that she was completely not at school today either. Okay. Um, so she never made it. Okay, what's her name? Madeline. M-A-D-E-L-I-N-E. M-A-D-E-L-I-N-E. I-N-E, last name? Soto, S-O-T-O. S-O-T-O? Yeah. Date of birth? February 22nd, 2011. February 27th, 2000. 22nd. Oh, sorry. 22nd. 2011. 2011. Just the 13th birthday. 13th. 48, Detroit Worldwide. What's the name of the single age? Madeline Soto, age 13. I'm trying to get a colon description now. What was she last seen wearing? Green. Green hoodie. Green hoodie. Um, and I think it was white Crocs. White Crocs. Either blue or black pants. I think black shorts. Black shorts? Yeah. Black shorts? Okay. Black shorts. All right. Do you know she has like friends in the area? She does, but she doesn't know where they live. She doesn't know where she lives. Okay. I asked all of them. So. 
in the description, she says black shorts. He says the blue jeans. He knows what she was wearing because he redressed her. Right? Because don't forget, on the Sunday, she was wearing that beautiful blue dress at a birthday party. Absolutely gorgeous, she did. Right? And she's come home, showered, took her meds and got in her PJs. Then whatever happened, happened. And then he's got her redressed into jeans, a green sweatshirt and white crocs. Why would she say, no, black shorts? Someone did mention, and I said, did mention this last night, that on a Monday was probably PE day. And that's probably why she would, she would wear black shorts. Right? And the mother would know that because the mother would know when they have PE. If they don't, then something's wrong. My mum knew every time when I had PE. Right? She knew. And she had seven kids. Right? And she knew what every child was doing at school that dad. They had PE. Everything. Right? So, she'd probably know Monday she'd be wearing black shorts. Or was it because she'd been wearing the black shorts? Possibility. Think on that. Why would she say black shorts? But he knew she was in jeans. He redressed her. Sick, sick, sick. Um, okay. It's just like, did she like have any places that you guys know that she would be, usually be at? Any friend's house? Any places that like she likes to hang out? Not typically, no. Not typically? No. Okay. Um, just give me one second. Let me see if I get some. Thank you. No problem. And what school she goes to? Hunters Creek Middle School. Hunters Creek Middle? All right, cool. One, two, five. Do you guys have, do you have a picture of her? Can you airdrop it to me? Yeah, I know. Um, let me see which picture. I don't know which picture. Thank you. Recently, probably from the birthday party, right? Yeah, but I wasn't there, so I have to look at mm -hmm. What's up? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. That's what I'm about to grab right now. Yeah. All right, cool thing. Is this a good enough picture or do you need a whole yeah, body picture? Perfect. Okay, where's the photo? Right there. It's on WhatsApp. That's fine. I wish we could just be in watching. He's watching. I saved it so much. I might. It your photos. Yeah, we can just go to the this isn't very clear, this one. Yeah, like that. See, I was looking over to see because he's got the phone, he's looking to see what he does. Okay, perfect. Give me a second. Okay. I'm going to send it out right now to my other guys. Thank you very much. No problem. Right, that was the first one. No, we don't want this. We don't want this. Don't want that one. That is to come. That one's to come. Right. Uh, it looked like 
Five or six? Five or six kids at the park. All right, can really yep. up. Oh, darn. Oh, so it's all right. <sighs> this one. showed up so they they called since i don't even know when but they whenever they what does it say that what did you call my question is not why is it not a cool three when it first came out see even that police officer is wondering asking why it wasn't a code a three when it was first reported. You know what I mean? We're looking like if this was reported at quarter to five as they say, quarter to five, quarter to six, quarter to six to quarter to seven. Nearly three hours like nearly three hours later. Two and a half, three hours later. Yeah, so uh, that last time she was seen it was early this morning, like seven o'clock. So That's what I'm about to see. I'm about to go check. I just try to get as much information now of her clothing description. Send it to Diaz. Who Diaz has a hit in like a, a big area full of kids. So if you want to help me out with this one, yeah. Can be my signal late expert. <laughs> Can't wait for tomorrow. I'll get my new chair tomorrow. This one's getting really uncomfortable. Get my new chair, hopefully delivered tomorrow. Why you think so? She has a phone like number, a phone. She does, but she left it at home to say, I have it. You have it. And I've already gone through her messages. Okay, how about, does she have like Apple Watch? No. She has, she's got a device, the only device she's got on her right now is her school laptop. Her school laptop, is that trackable? I don't think so. Yeah, it should be. It should be. It should be. It should be. Should be. If the Wi Fi is turned on. It'll try to connect to me. So, by like circle here, you're going to send me a little bit of 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 a but um, he dropped her off on the block away and drove away. Okay. Did she have a motor school? No, we called school. Her hang motion. Watch her hang motion. It's like so flippant. Embarrassed by this car. So she didn't want to be dropped off at school. She wanted to be dropped off the block away so she can walk. She's in a face. But um, he dropped her off on the block away and drove away. Drove away. Like, Did she have a motor scooter? Okay. No, we called. So while she, he drove away, she gives that little flick of a hand. She just drove away. That's the sort of action when someone says something to me and I'm ragging off, I go, and you flick your hand. You go from your palm, palm down to your palm up. up. Like, I don't want you. Don't talk to me no more. And that's the sort of action she did. With the flick of the hand. Well, it was walking in that direction. She was rifling through her backpack, slipping some. I thought maybe she was just looking for headphones before she got the walking on. Yeah. Um, but she was just kind of, you know, shambling over in that direction. It looked the same as any other morning. Okay. Um, what was last night? Who is she? So, so. I got confirmation from the school that she never made it. They sent me an email saying she, she didn't make it. Mm -hmm. But I also spoke to her or emailed one of her teachers directly. And he looked at all her attendance for all her periods and told me she, she didn't make it at all today. Okay. Um, again. No, she was, she was, she was supposed to have a book bag. She was supposed to go to school, but didn't go to school today. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. 
battery at GOA 213819 at Turtle Back Blue. Third party in for Saturday. Okay. Complaint. All right. Children okay. by two juvenile males. Request a temporary only at code 219.5. Um, I'm trying to figure out uh, secondary spots, but so far, negative on anything. Um, yeah, you could be 51 of me. All right, cool. Sorry for watching. All right, cool. Attention sector 40 units, prepare to copy a local from OPD at Orange. Yeah, it's at negative on that hit at the apartment. So. I think black shorts. An unknown male, gray hoodie, oh, black pants, black and black and black black No further information, 1064, menu 46. And was the last time you seen her? Do you know the what, around what time? Around 8.30, 8.40 when, when we dropped her off. Uh, how tall is she? 5'1". Uh, wait. I must admit, I hate, this is just me personally, I hate to see people wearing socks with Crocs. It just, ooh, just, no, just didn't sit right with me, right? <laughs> so, but personally, I don't like, I'm not a fan of Crocs. I keep saying, oh, I'll buy myself a pair, I'll buy myself a pair, just for when I nip out to take the rubbish out or something. And people go, oh, but you'll get so used to them because they're so comfy and you'll be wearing them to the shops. No, I won't. I'll be putting my trainers on or my boots on, my ankle boots that I love to wear. I won't be wearing the Crocs to the shop. 110 pounds? 110, 100. Um, hair color? Blonde. Blonde, like that. Dirty blonde. Like a dirty blonde? Yeah. Okay, um, eye color? Blue. Does she have any markings on her, like any scars or anything like that? a distinctive beauty mark on her face On her face. On the face, like below the nose or near the nose? Yeah, yeah like right in that area there. It's, it's very distinctive. You'd know it if you saw it. Big. Any other scars or anything like that? Which scars? No. no. Tattoos. Tattoos. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah, You'd be surprised. <laughs> I will not be laughing. I put the top part out. I didn't get the rest of that stuff yet. So I need to put it out. But then, no. Okay. Can I just see that phone? Black shorts, white pants, socks, five one night. Laundry, dirty blonde hair. Blue eyes, has a beauty mark under the nose. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a random four oh seven number. Um, okay. Hello? Yes? This is interesting. Look how he's looking at her. Because they don't know who's calling. What's she being a minute? Oh, he's got his guys head up in the end again. Uh, no, her office is here right now. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can find her paperwork. Does she have any social media? She has Instagram. Right here. Okay, Tessa, I'm going to just get back to you. Hold on. Hold on. I think it's just here. Hello? Yes? Hi, Principal. I'm okay. How are you? It's the lab. Oh, really? Get started in the uh, yeah, I'm not fine, guys. Does she have any social media or anything like that? Yes. Uh, she has Instagram. Right here. It is 
Okay. Any Snapchat or? Uh, So that's that. Let's just get rid of this. Okay. Like Mark, when I talk to zero. Right, let's just close that down. Right, so, so far, we've watched the two interviews she did with the TV people, which I find very interesting. The first one, she's so anxious, her, her whole body's everywhere. She's here, there, you know what I mean? Her legs were going, her hands were going. Uh, like, people say, you can tell by the body, by the way they look, what way they look with the eyes. Well, the eyes were all over the place, left, right, up, down. You can tell by her eyes, but whether she was making it up or whether it's something that was true. You know what I mean? Because the eyes were all over the place. And her leg was shaking and her hands were going. Right? So, but then by the time, by the second interview she did, which was on Lauren, she seemed calmer. So I'm wondering, had she took some medication to calm her down? Because she was a lot calmer in that interview than she was the first one. Right? So, that was, and there's so many red flags that come up, like we, 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 we took her to school. We dropped her off. It. No, you didn't. And then later on, she'll go, well, my partner, he took her to school. You know what I mean? So, it's just, I haven't heard anything yet that tells me what I want to hear. And that was, what was it I was looking for? What information was I looking for? Um, hold on, hold on. My cats are doing, using my living room as an assault course again. Don't place around like it's a boxing ring. It's not. Right? Go. Right, so we've got through those those ones, but I'm sure there's some else, but that whatever I want to show you again on those other interviews, those other clicks, comes into not tomorrow night, it'll probably be, because Friday I think I'm doing Sebastian. So it'll be either Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening. I'll be looking at the reaction of the dogs, the videos of the dogs. Right? That's interesting. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to map out where we went. At what time? So I'm going to listen to the interview he does tomorrow. That's because I've just told him to stop the fighting. The ones now fight are uh, crying. Hold on. Anyway, so <clears throat> there's lots of stuff I want to show you and discuss. 
Anyway, we're now going to go. Then I'll get my that go back up again. Uh, the police interviews. Sorry about my cat in the background. It's adamant he's going to sit there and moan because that's what he likes to do. Can you hear my cat in the background? Oh my god! Yeah, I think this is the. Uh... Yeah. No, it's no, no. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, let's go to home. Um, I have got the place. What was that I just saw then? What was that I just saw then? Are they kidding me? Wow! A hundred k reward now for Sebastian Rogers. Wow! So who's added? I know one guy has put up a twenty five thousand reward. So that took it to seventy five thousand. So he's put the other 25. And now, yeah, oh, that's why I was going to do it on Friday about Sebastian because, dog, the bounty hunter is now in on it. He's now coming in on it. Of course, he would. There's a 100k now sitting on it, isn't there? Right? Unless he's put the other 25k. I don't know. But that's a lot of money now. Someone's got to talk. Someone's going to talk for that, surely. Anyway, that isn't what I was there for. <laughs> All right. Uh, here it is. I think it is this. <sighs> yeah, we'll be talking about Sebastian Rogers on Friday. But then again, I don't know because I've got a lot of work to cover for the for the uh, Stephen Stearns. I might do Sebastian Rogers tomorrow and do the Stephen Stearns Friday. I don't know. If I get all the information I need for Stephen Stearns sorted out by tomorrow, then I'll do Stephen Stearns. You'll know, you'll get notification. Right. So. Let's just pick up on this. Now, this is the first interview she did, I believe, with the police. All right. The first one. It's, both interviews are on here, but this is the first one. So. Let's listen to this. Buckle up. Oh, God, me for a moment thinking about watching these interviews. I'm trying to write part. Like, I've wrote a lot of these red flags down already, so I've already got them written down, so I've not been writing a lot down. Right? But I just found in that one, that one which we'll be really listening to, there was something in there, and I'm thinking, did she say that? That's why my title on it is Jen Sate. Did she really say that? <laughs> All right. Oh, my Lord. Tuesday, February. My cat, I'm going to crucify one of these days because it just jumped up on my table. All right. So. I'm going to lie down, Bobby. 27th, 2024, 1116 hours for OCSO case 24-011313. you state your full name? When it goes quiet, it's where they've redacted it. Okay? It's not me. It's not the internet. It's where they've redacted it. Jennifer, this at Soda. All right, Jennifer. So um, I'm here to talk to you today. We're going to talk about... 
Um, and you're familiar with kind of why we're talking right now, right? Yes. Okay. Um, can you tell me when is the last time you were with Sam? Hold on. Tuesday, February 27th, 2024, 1116 hours for OCSO case 24-011313. Can you state your full name? Jennifer oh, Lucette Soda. What? All right, told. Jennifer. So um, I'm here to talk to you today. We're going to talk about... Um, and you're familiar with kind of why we're talking right now, right? Yes. Okay. Um, can you tell me when is the last time you were with Sam? Now, this interview was done on February the 27th, which was the Tuesday. Right now, you just watch those two interviews she first did with that news news company, and she stated she never saw the video of the church footage. Listen to this interview near the end of this part of the interview. Listen to it. Saw her. I'm going to say Sunday night. Okay. Heard her, I heard her one day getting ready for school. So okay. you last saw her Sunday night about what time? I would say 11 p.m. before she went to bed. And you were here at home? Yeah. Gotcha. And where did she go to bed? Was she in her room, your room, or something else? She actually slept upstairs uh, with... Um, um, we have a guest bedroom. We, we were all going to sleep together in the same in bed but I needed some good sleep and um I had but Jen you had all day Monday right to get some good sleep all day I had not I got a new job recently I haven't been well rested I needed some sleep so I asked hey can you guys go to the guest bedroom upstairs mm -hmm. Um, I knew he was going to get her ready. And Sorry. So she just sent him to the guest bedroom, right? Because someone was saying, did she send him to the guest bedroom or did she send her to her bed? Right? So she did send to the guest bedroom. Okay. So I'll just write that down. Okay, so um, you needed some good sleep. So was it about 11 o'clock? Yeah. Um, I sent them upstairs, and I went to bed. Okay. And that was about 11? Yeah. And you do you guys normally all sleep together? Because I know you said that she sleeps in your room with you typically, right? Uh, she sleeps with me typically. Uh, typically when comes into town because he he no longer, he lives with his parents in Northport, Florida. Mm -hmm. When he comes to town, he'll sleep in the guest bedroom. Okay. And Stefan is the one you're referring to, right? Yeah, Stefan. Stefan, how often does he stay here? Oh. He moved away back in December, so I'm going to say um, he's visited at least two to three times since then. Okay. Why did he move away? Um, he was offered a better, well, his dad had offered him a job, mm -hmm. but it fell through. Oh. So okay. now we're trying to get him back here. No, his dad didn't offer him a job. His dad was not prepared to pay £600 a month. For him to sleep in that bedroom. He couldn't afford it. Right? Because, oh, God forbid Stefan goes and gets a decent job and pays his own way. Oh, God forgive. No, can't do that, can he? He has to sponge off his parents. And he just visits. Yeah. When he visits, does he stay for, like, hours, days, weeks? Um. Uh... Uh, I would say days. This time we had planned on him staying a whole week because um, I was going through training at work. Mm -hmm. So I wanted him to be here to help me with the dog, help me with the dog. 
the training. Okay, so this time he was planning to stay for a week. How long has he been here? Um, or when did he arrive, rather, this time? I can't remember if he arrived Saturday or, or Sunday morning. Look, this is Tuesday, sweetheart. Tuesday. We're not going back a month now. We're going back Monday, Sunday, Saturday. Three days. Come on. We know he got there Sunday. Okay, that's fine. Sometime this weekend? Yeah. So that was last night around 11. And so about what time did you hear her on uh, Monday morning? I heard everyone getting ready around... I'm going to say 7.30, 8 o'clock. And was it just Steph? Who else lives there? I have roommates. Um, okay. I have Angelica Negro. There's uh, one roommate. And then Natalie Rosero. Okay. And you just heard all of them, or did you hear anyone in specific? No, I just heard, uh, if anything, Stefan came and woke me up accidentally because um, he was trying to let the dog out. Mm -hmm. And the dog uh, gets really nervous sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was trying to help him with that, uh, get him on his leash. But uh, he got him situated and took him for a walk. Okay. Did you hear around seven or eight? I heard noises in the kitchen, but I'm not sure, you know. Not sure who it was exactly. Who it was exactly, yeah. Sure. It could have been a I'm sure you could tell if it was your daughter's voice. Or if it was one of your housemates, because one of your housemates don't speak a lot of English. Speak Spanish. Any of the roommates. But you didn't see her leave Monday morning. Uh, were you still in bed or still in your room? I was still asleep, yeah. Gotcha. What time does she normally leave for school? Uh, we usually leave around eight fifty at the latest. Okay. What time does she have to be to school by? Uh, nine twenty-eight is when school starts. Gotcha. And so you, I think you had said the previous night, you and Stefan had agreed that he was going to get. Yeah. And take her in yeah. the morning? Okay. And they were going to stop at McDonald's and get breakfast, but she changed her mind last minute and did not want McDonald's. Okay. When did you find that out? Oh, uh, when did I find that out? When Stefan called me around 10, 18 in the morning, um, I had stepped out to go get blood work done. Mm -hmm. And he had just let me know that uh, he just got back home. Uh, from running a few errands and that uh, I asked did you guys ever just stop at McDonald's and he said no she changed her mind he, he tried convincing her a few times but she did not want McDonald's anymore at what time did you leave the house yesterday in the morning or at what time did you step out rather I'm going to say around 9.30 had Stefan returned at all? No. So you were there from, just so I have my times kind of right. So you woke up around seven or eight. You saw Stefan, because uh, you, you, you helped him with the dog, because he was letting the dog out, right? Yeah. Um, and then did you go back to sleep, or were you just kind of in the room? I laid back down and went back to sleep. Okay. And then... Do you remember what time you woke up after that? I believe I set my alarm for 9 a.m. Gotcha. So it would have been around 9 a.m. that you woke up. Um, and in that time, in that time, you didn't see Stefan return at all? Okay. You left around 9.30, and then Stefan called you around 10 to say he got home? Yeah. Cool. 
Got it. Um, okay. Did he say anything else aside from she didn't want to go to McDonald's? Um, about her, no. About his morning, yes. He okay. had um, tried going to the vape shop when it opened right after he dropped her off from school mm-hmm. and waited, but they never opened on time. So he came back, hung out a little bit. And he came home around 10 and then went back out eventually to the vape store to go get some vape stuff. So he left after 10. What time did you get back home for the day? Let me check something. I want to check what time my blood work appointment is at. I'll give you more of an accurate time. Yeah. Okay, I'm writing down what she's saying about the time and where where there was and where the went. Okay, so my appointment was at ten fifteen and it took them forty five minutes to see me. So I didn't get home until eleven fifteen, eleven thirty. Mm-hmm. And was stepping back at that point in time. I'm gonna say yes. Okay. I'm not, I can't remember. And then what did the day look like after that? It's fine. Um, so I did my blood work, then I came back, and then I just waited. I waited for the rest of the day until... I did my blood work, then I came back, and then I just waited... So flippant, like, oh, I just did this and I just did that. Well, why didn't you pick up a dirty laundry from the night before? That was on the bathroom floor. That was what I'd be doing if if I was at home and no one was in. I'd be going around cleaning up the bathroom, cleaning up the kitchen, Cleaning in the living room, the dining room, making my beds. You know what I mean? That's what I used to do when my kids were at school. I'd sit down and have lunch about one, then about half two, start sort myself out to go and pick the kids up, to walk up the road to pick the kids up for, was it 3.30 they came out? 3.15 or 3.30, I can't remember now, but I know it was about 3.15, 3.30, that came So I used to leave about 3 o'clock. So after I'd done all my housework in the morning, I'd to turn the kids to school, doing all my housework, did any shopping I had to do, cleaned up, right? I'd then sit down in the afternoon, have some lunch, chill out for a bit, watch a bit of TV, and then go and pick my kids up. And then all have it got let, let, let loose once they come home. 2.30 to leave. Uh, well, I wait in the car line, so I'm first in line uh, to okay. pick her up. Yeah, that car line can be vicious. Yeah. So you left approximately 2.30. Yeah. And pickups around 4, right? Yeah. Okay. Now when you got there at 4, then what happened? I waited in the car line for about 10 minutes. Um, and she never came out, so I thought, maybe she, I missed her. I couldn't remember if I told her I was picking her up from school that day or if she had to walk to the office. Okay. So I went to the office to see if she made it. She never did. I drove around a little bit. Okay. I drove around a little bit. Um, Looking for her, I went back to the school. The school was closed at this point. Um, I wanted to speak to somebody at the office to see if anybody could tell me if she had been there. Uh, I think at this point, I had called, before I went to the school, I actually called her best friend. I said, hey, with you, I can't find her. She's, she didn't walk to the office and she wasn't at school when I went to pick her up. She said, mm-hmm. she never made it. Um, she, 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 it's a first or second period. And I'm like, what do you mean? I dropped her off. Or I, we dropped her off close to school. Hey, that. 
What do you mean? I dropped you off. Oh, we dropped you off. Twice she made that mistake. I dropped you off. We dropped you off. You corrected yourself, but you still lied. You know what I mean? I dropped you off, but then she corrects herself by saying we. But you wasn't there. And she said she didn't make it the first second period. I said, please check with the rest of your friends. Uh, she did. She got back to me and said none of them saw her today. I emailed one of her teachers. Her teacher texted me her attendance for the whole day and told me she wasn't in school at all. Yeah, we know that. You emailed him and messaged him about 5.26 p.m. We know. That's when I knew something was wrong and I freaked out. Okay. Um, is it typical of to walk to after school? If I'm working, yes. And where's, where, I mean, in relation to the school, like, is it a close walk, long walk? It's a very close walk. So typically in the morning, if, uh, or I guess before Stefan moved, did he live with y'all? Um, so it's typical of him to be able to get her ready in the mornings and drop her to school. Do y'all tend to split that responsibility or what does that look like? Typically I do it. Okay. Uh, this morning, because because of my work schedule, because I've been so exhausted, I asked him to take over and do it, and he said he would. Okay. Has he done it before, though? Like, he is, is he familiar with how to drop her off? And... I'm going to say he's done it once before, once or twice before. I'm not too sure. Okay. In the time since he's been back. Well, not this time, because he's only come back over the weekend. But in the other times, he's done it maybe once or twice. I'm, I'm going to say, yeah. Is there any reason that he drops her off, or he dropped her off a block away instead of dropping her off to the school? Because she asked. Because she is embarrassed of his car. Really? When did she express that? <laughs> multiple times <laughs> when we've been like okay i think stefan might take you to school or he might pick you up she goes can he pick me up far away can can he leave me here like i don't want i don't want to be seen i'm just like what car does he drive i'm curious it's that buick oh okay but to her that's an old no. car. <laughs> fancy taste i get it i get it um Can you remember anything about Sunday or Saturday or this weekend where she may have said that she was wanting to hang out with friends or something she was wanting to do or anything? Um, on Sunday, she actually had a party uh -huh. and she had some friends come over. Uh -huh. So she hasn't expressed that she wanted. She actually got to spend time with her. Even in this interview, she seems calm. You know what I mean? In all these interviews she, she does after that very first one she did with the news people. Well, the news people would have been after this interview. Because this was done Tuesday morning. The interview with the first news one would have been sometime Tuesday. Right? And then the one which was done on the evening must have been done before they moved out of the property. So she did two interviews on that Tuesday and the one with the police in the morning and the, another interview with the crime, sex crimes unit. Doesn't blink an eyelid. Doesn't go, what? What? What sex crimes got to do with a missing child? And family. She had a great Sunday. Um, okay. 
She came back with a lot of presents. She was super happy. Um, okay. So, no arguments at home recently or anything? No, nothing like that. Um, has she ever, in the totality of, I guess, everything, as long as she's been ever gone off to spend time by herself or gone to hang out at a park by herself or something to kind of clear her own head? So there's a lake right behind this hat, this building. Mm -hmm. She'll sometimes sit at the dock by the, uh, by the lake, but I check on her often. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out, I mean, if she... I don't know if something at school upset her, something here upset her. Not that it would be anyone's fault, but if there's somewhere that she may go for, like, you know, peace of mind. Yeah, it would be the lake right behind the house. Did she do any extra? Why do parents have missing children, right, all of a sudden seem like helicopter parents, knowing exactly where their kids were? When I was 13, oh God, my mum had an idea where I was, where she could find me, but I didn't exactly say, I'm going, I'm going here, mum, I'm going there. She had no idea, because we went to the same place every time, right? Well, there were certain places. In the summer, we was always up at the park. In the winter, we'd go up to the park for a few hours, and then we'd come and sit in this doorway then, of this office block, which was just on the corner of our road where I grew up. So my mum and dad knew where we was, but they never come out checking on us, unless I wasn't in by 9pm. And then, then they come out looking for me. Curriculars? No. Got it. Now, your, um, your roommates, I know you told me their names earlier, but can you give them to me again? I didn't write them down. Sure. Um, Angelica. And then Negro, N-I-G-R-O. Uh-huh. And then mm-hmm. Nathalie, which is N A T H A L I E. Rosero. R O S E R O. Okay. Do you have a phone number by chance? Yeah. If they're not here. Are you okay? Do you have to use the bathroom? No, I'm just anxious. Oh, okay. I've got anxiety. Let me see. Okay, Angelica, she primarily speaks Spanish, so you okay. probably need a Spanish speaker. Okay. Uh, and then, nah. That's why I can't understand when she said, she heard voices in the kitchen, which she didn't know who there was. Well, I hear voices, man, I've got people staying here. I can hear voices of people in my living room or my kitchen, and I can tell who they are. And I, we're talking about one who primarily speaks Spanish, so she's going to have a strong Spanish accent as well when she talks, I should imagine. One would have been her daughter. Another one would have been Stefan. All right. When's the last time you got in any kind of trouble at home? I'm gonna say a few weeks ago. What was that um, for? I don't think if she gets a yelling or if she gets in trouble for anything, it's for 
her disorganization and messiness. You know, she leaves laundry on the floor. Okay. Her room's a mess. Um, she keeps her space very or disorganized. So I, I kind of get on. Her room. Her room. She hasn't got a room. She has a space at the in the corner, but end of the room between the dining room and living room. She has a section of that with a bed there and a unit and a table. That's her bedroom. On top of her. Do I remember the actual argument? No. When I went through her text messages back on February 2nd or 3rd, mm -hmm. she had expressed to a friend that, you know, I was crazy. I was acting, you know, yeah. being nuts. Um, All this old stuff to say. Yeah. Apparently I had... I don't remember this in this conversation. I remember saying this once, but not in February. But uh, she had said, uh, you know, if she continues to behave this way or not listen, um, you know, when she turns 18, I'm not going to want to live with her. Okay. Or um, also I would ship her off to her dad's. Oh. But I never. Where does her dad live? Houston, Texas. Okay. Um, has she ever expressed wanting to go back and live with them? No. How often does she uh, see him or talk to him at all? Talks to him once in a while. Um, via phone or probably? Yeah, via phone, yeah. Okay. Uh, text message or Instagram, they'll message each other. Um, but I talked to him last night and she's like, just so you're aware, she hasn't said anything about making plans to come over here or see me or come visit me. So he doesn't have any information on where she might be okay he's actually willing to come over here too if we need him to okay uh, but he does doesn't know he comes over on the i think he waited the tuesday then he couldn't wait any longer and he come over on the wednesday i believe um but she's never made any plans i guess to go see him yeah. what's uh what's the dad's what's that, her dad's name Do you know his phone number? So I think it's this one. It's and he lives in Texas? In Houston, yeah. How long has he worked? Or how long? Lived, uh, he was in the military way, either it's Kansas or... Oh, so he's never had any, like, custody or anything no, of her? nothing. Okay. And has she ever, I guess, has she ever formed, a, like, a relationship with him where they bond and talk or anything that, like, she... I guess I, I would try to rule out the possibility that she would be trying to go to Texas and see him or meet up with him or... They're as close as they can be with how limited contact he does have with her. He he texts her once in a blue, right? No, oh, not okay. as not as consistent as I would like him to. But okay, I don't think she's making her move to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's left her debit card here. All of her money's here. Um, her cell phone's here. Is it typical of her to leave her cell phone? Does she normally have it? She's got ADHD. She's very forgetful. This happens often. Oh, so she frequently forgets her things. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, as far as her uh, mental diagnosis, she's diagnosed with ADHD. How long has she had ADHD? Since she was like five, six. Um, they also diagnosed her at the same time with autism. Um, so she had, she's had an autism diagnosis for a few years now. I've re reassessed her recently. They told me, um, she had some autistic traits, but they weren't sure if she was autistic. Uh -huh. Um, so. So, I mean, do you ever notice her, uh, mental capacity impacting her ability to, I guess, be around other kids or function normally? 
I would say sometimes because she acts. I'm not sure. Sometimes, sometimes she'll make some decisions. That I'm just like, where did that come from? Like, I mean, is that like, would that be a result of a mental disability, or would that be like a result of her being? I mean, does she? I guess, like, basic questions I always kind of ask. Or does she, can she feed herself without? assistance does she shower and bathe without assistance i mean she has the phone so she can text and talk to people uh, she has friends at school yeah. gotcha um and has she ever complained about school uh not complained exactly i know it's tough on her she's given a lot of work she's always behind on work mm, okay got it um and i think the deputies already last night kind of went through her social media a little bit but um if you're okay with it i'd actually like to take her phone so that i can see if i can get anything else from it um you know we've, typically i will uh typically me being able to go through it and go through texts and social media will help me sort of establish a pattern of where people go and whatnot that's something you'd let me do. Um, sure. Will you take her phone away forever or just no, no, for right now? Just for as long as I need it to actually go through it. So okay. um, I'll give it back to you as soon as I'm done. Um, as soon as we find her, I'll give it back to her, hopefully. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's just about all the questions I have at the moment. Um, you know her better than I do. I guess my, my last thing would be like, what do you... What do you think based off of everything that we've talked about and everything that you've learned so far? Is anything sticking out to you? Based off of everything, me knowing her and knowing how she is and how tight knit we are, like, I don't think she would run away. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like she was taken, like, on that short walk. I don't think she was that tight knit. I really don't. And she's had ADHD for a long time then. So as she's growing up, she should have started to... I don't know. Don't criticise me for this, but I would have thought she would have started to have a plan of how to what she had to do each day and stick to that plan. But as for her schoolwork, she had no privacy. She had nowhere she could just go and shut a door behind her, shut everything out, all the noise off around her, so she could sit there and concentrate on her work. You know what I mean? They've got people coming in and out. They've got two of her housemates that live in that house. Yeah? So they've got them coming in and out from work or whatever. They've got the mum constantly moaning because she hasn't done this and she hasn't done that. You've got dogs, you've got cats, you've got God knows who coming in. Friends of the other women who stay there. Hi. She had no time to actually sit down on her own with the door shut. So she could block everything out and just do what she had to do. She had a pokey little space in the end, at the end of the living room. And that was it. Uh, from where she was dropped off to the school, uh, it was early in the morning. I'm not sure how many cars were around. Mm -hmm. um, I think she was dropped off somewhere between 8.30 and 8.45 in the morning, which is normal earlier than we normally take her. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. Okay. I, I want to say, I think I, from what I understood, Orange County got footage of someone by the church in a description of what she was wearing early that morning, mm -hmm. just hanging out in the parking lot, and then she got up and left. Yeah, so the video, um, they wrote it here, but there was a, video of uh essentially what looks like her um at around 8 45 just about that time 
um, walking into that church parking lot that's right there where she got dropped off by Stefan. And it looks like she sits there for about 15 minutes or so and then walks away. Um, so I'm wondering if she... It's typical for her to wait at that parking lot, too, for my stepdad to pick her up from school. So it's not abnormal for her to hang out there. In that parking lot? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you, can you think of any reason why she might have chosen yesterday morning to to wait there? Um, I mean, obviously, your stepdad's not, your stepdad's not picking her yeah, up in pick the morning. Her up. But, I wonder if she knew, like, if she had an idea she was super early, so she was just trying to kill time a little bit. Um, but I don't know why she didn't go directly to the school. Like, yeah. She should have. Okay. Uh, I know when Stefan dropped her off, he said that he saw her rummaging through her phone. Well, we also know she used to go in when she was doing that project on the door, the decorating door, door decorating. She used to go in early then and stay after school some days as well. So she could have gone, if that was the case, she could, he could have dropped her off. If, she, if he, if we knew, if we didn't know what we know now, he could have easily dropped her off at school at 25 to, oh sorry, that's my alarm, 25 to 8. And she could have probably gone and sat in, I don't know if there were a canteen area where she could have sat or something. But knowing what we know now, we know she wasn't even in that church, by that church. As she drove away, like deeply looking into her, not her phone, her sorry, backpack. Her backpack. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming she was looking for her phone and realized she didn't have it with her at that time. Got it. But, um. Okay. Does she have a, does she have any kind of boyfriend or significant other at school that she's ever talked about or expressed? No boyfriend. She did recently tell Stefan that she had a crush on a boy. Oh, okay. And, that's... and we saw messages between them and the, nothing seemed weird. But you okay. can look through that as well. His Thank name you. is... Another, I assume, another middle school boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Stefan wouldn't have liked that, would he? Because we know from his parents that he had separation issues as a child. Right? And he also had... I think he still had those separation issues. Because we know he had a fixation on Madeline. His, the mum has already said, oh, there's always on FaceTime, there's always talking on the phone about this or that or whatever. You know what I mean? So, it doesn't make sense. I don't think Madeline was... Liking the fact that he was maybe on the phone all day to her. Cross, you've moved out, can't you give me a rest, you know what I mean? Leave me alone. And I think she told him about this crush on the boy, and he wouldn't have liked that. I don't think he would have liked that at all. Because it's like her saying, I don't want you no more, leave me alone. I've, there's someone else I like. You know what I mean? And he couldn't have rejection. He wouldn't like rejection. Are you guys out here? Yeah, yeah, they're right out there. They just wanted to ask him a couple of things, but I figured I'd, I'd just ask you this at the same time for the sake of time. Um, do you recognize this vehicle at all? I wanted to see if I could. So I know it's pretty grainy. Um, it's this one right here. That one's tough, but does that look familiar at all? No. You don't know that anywhere? I don't know that part. Gotcha. Either. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is the, it's hard to show you on my phone because the quality of the video just kind of gets worse when I, I downloaded it from the church's computer uh -huh. and the quality just gets kind of worse. Um, can you make out like the shape of that being black shorts and that being a possibly a green jacket. I see the green. Would that, I mean, I know it's pretty difficult to recognize, but would that, would that be something, some clothes that she owns or yes. would the quality be too bad for you to be able to tell based on that? I mean, the quality's terrible. Yeah. The color scheme. Would that be akin?
to something that she owns. Yeah. Gotcha. And the hair looks a little dark in the yeah. from here. Dirty blonde. It, it could pass for dirty blonde. That could think, possibly yeah. be her. Okay. Um, is that? I I can't tell just from looking. at And my look, my cat is sitting right behind my lap laptop, and it's looking out of the door at something. And I'm thinking, what are you looking at? What are you seeing? Stop freaking me out, cat. Honestly, you've got to see this cat. It's like, there's something there. I can see it. I'm going to go it in a minute. I'm looking at the door and I can't see nothing. They do it on the night time. They sit on my bed. They be lying on my bed and then all of a sudden they shoot up. And you can tell the ears are quick. The tails are going. And they're looking out my bedroom door. So I'm sitting up looking out the bedroom door behind them. I'm thinking, what are you looking at? There's nothing there. They freak me out when they do that. He's now lying behind the laptop, looking out the door. I don't know what he's looking at. At it, but is that possible? Is that Stefan's car? It looks a little darker from there, but I almost can't tell like if it's a Toyota or. A... Yeah, let's just go back a bit. Would that? I mean, I know it's very difficult to recognize, but would that? Would that be something? Some clothes that she owns, or yes. would the quality be too bad for you to be able to tell based on that? I mean, the quality is terrible. But yeah. The color scheme. Would that be akin to something that she owns? Yeah. Gotcha. And the hair looks a little dark in the yeah. from here. Dirty blonde. It, it, could, it could pass for dirty blonde. That could I possibly think, yeah. be her. Okay. Um, is that? I, I can't tell just from looking at it, but is that possible? Is that Stefan's car? It looks a little darker from there, but I almost can't tell like if it's a Toyota or a... It looks a little different. From the front looks different. That, that looks like a Toyota from the front. From and the then front it looks the different, right? And then from the side, it could be. It's got a little. I mean, yeah, the grill is kind of the same. A little bit. The headlights look a bit the same. Okay, cool. And I just wanted to see if you kind of were able to to help me with that. Um, so this whole living in the woods thing, I have people like tromping through the woods right now on horses and ATVs and all sort of things, but has she ever mentioned that before? Just in that text that I saw. Just that's that's the only time you've ever heard of it? Is she outdoorsy at all? Does she like camping? We used to go hiking. Okay. Uh, we haven't done that in a while. Okay. Um, Where did you go? Was it around here? Where would we go? We'd go hiking in like St. Cloud. Um, Lake Lizzie Preserve is what it's called. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not that's, too, too far. It's about 35 minutes away. Yeah, okay. Um, <coughs> um, Lake Lizzie Preserve, we've, got, we've also walked Shingle Creek before, but we haven't done that in a very long, long while. Um, but no, I know, the thing is, I started talking to her about World War Three. I was talking about, like, hey, this is going on in Palestine and Israel right now. Oh, so you're talking to her about so, the wars. I, I, was, I was telling her, I was talking to her about just what's happening politically, and I'm like, you know, I don't know what that means for us, but we'll see what happens. But I've talked to her about World War III. So. What that means for us, that means nothing to you. That's in Palestine. That's in Israel, wherever. You're in the USA. Right? What's going on over there? means nothing to you, safety was, right? And you're telling, you're talking to your daughter who's 13, who has anxiety, and you're talking to her about all this chaos going on over in another country, right? No wonder her anxiety is playing her up. You wouldn't do that, would you? First thing to do when anyone's suffering from anxiety is to scare the living daylights out of them. So I'm just saying, How that long ago was that? I mean, is that something that might have impacted ago. her? Yeah, like, I know? feel like okay. that's why when I read that conversation, I'm like, oh, that's directly co related to me talking to her about what's happening in Israel and Palestine and the potential World War III that might happen from that. Okay. And that's why she said she wanted to go live in the woods. Okay. Got it. All right. No, no, just wanted to wanted to figure out where that might have come from maybe help me see if she just wanted to be in the no if she said that it was because she wanted to get away from Stefan not because of 
something that's happening in another country miles and miles and miles and miles and miles, and miles away. You know what I mean? Outdoors. Well, um, the World War Three conversation, that's definitely me. Okay. That was me. It's fine. I mean. We'll grow three. We'll grow three, love. A child, a 13 year old, doesn't need to know about that yet. Perhaps when they're 16, 17. Yeah, right. I was watching something today, a YouTube channel, and it was about a guy in the UK, an old gentleman, who's on hunger strike because of what the government over here have done, are doing. They spoke to three or four young lads. I was dumbfounded. I thought, oh my God, and this is the generation we've got to come. Oh my. And I'm thinking, really? Really? Okay. Yeah. Why are you asking these young, youngsters about what's going on in the, with the government? They don't know what the hell you're talking about. Ask them where they can get a bag of weed from. Oh, they tell you that, no problem. They don't know what you're talking about when you ask them about government policies and all this crap. And if they do, they give you an answer, it's like, you sit there and you're sitting there with bewilderment going, really? Okay. I'm just going to pack my bag now and move to another country. Because if we've got these teenagers growing up with that sort of way of thinking, ideology and thinking, then we are doomed. We are well and truly doomed. Then we can talk about World War Three. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so one thing that I think I, I may have misheard you say earlier, but I want to make sure that I have it absolutely clear, is um, on Sunday night, y'all went to bed around 11. And the reason that you sent her upstairs with uh, Stefan was because you had work in the morning, was it? Or you just started a new job? I just started a new job and I haven't been sleeping well. Oh. I have to take, I take psychiatric meds every night uh, oh, okay. for my bipolar disorder. And oh, yeah. if I don't take them the right way, eat and go to sleep on time, they don't work. They don't work. Gotcha. So I was just like, hey, I really need these meds because I, I forgot them the night before. I forgot gotcha. them, I think Saturday night. So Sunday I was not myself. So okay. I asked them like, hey, I need, I need to be medicated. I need to sleep. Can you take care of the morning duties so I can go and okay. sleep? Gotcha. All right. No, I just wanted I just wanted to make sure I understood you right because I was like, did you have work in the morning or I didn't write that down and I, I wanted to. Right. First of all, I want to point out. She said in that one interview that she hadn't seen the grainy video. Yep. Those interviews happened after this interview. This interview happened first. This was on Tuesday morning. So those other two interviews she did happened later on in the day. Well, even on the evening. One happened on the evening because you could tell by the reporter it was dark outside. And yet she said she hadn't seen that grainy video. Yet, you've just heard them say, do you, would this... I know it's very grainy, but do the colours mean anything to you? And she's gone, I can see the green, and that is the sort of thing she would wear. So she'd already seen it, but when she spoke to the TV people, she said she hadn't seen it. So there's another lie, Jen. i make sure I heard you okay. Are there any cameras in the neighborhood that you know? Does anyone have any ring cameras? Do you have any security cameras out front? I'm going to say there are cameras in the front. There are cameras in the back gate as well. Okay. Um, I know one neighbor around here has a ring camera, oh. but um, I didn't want to go like that. Okay. Hey, Jay, how are you? Um, and if you don't mind, just try to keep people out of because um, I have a canine that's coming. If you don't mind, they're going to try to run another track from the church and from here. 
okay. to see if we can maybe try and try it again. You know, last night it didn't work out because the dog lost interest and they weren't able to continue. Oh, yeah. We you know, I've seen that video footage. And that was the night. That was a Monday night. Right. And I had the dog out in the car park, going around the cars and all this lot, and around the house. What was they doing? Oh, yeah, standing on the pathway outside the house. Why? Why? Was she trying to purposely distract the dog, disrupt the dog? Was she trying to do that, Jen and Stefan? Was she trying to distract the dog from going around the cars, from going around by your front door and finding a, tra a trace of Madeline? Was you? I think he was. Even when they said, please go inside, the dog's not coming in, we're not coming in the house, we're just outside, please go inside. It still took several minutes before, oh, oh, yeah, I think we best go indoors. You had no reason to be outside. The police were doing their job. But I figured, you know, it's worth another try. The dogs are pretty good. So just try to keep them out of her room. We're probably going to use like a, does she have dirty laundry or like the a dirt, her, her most recent dirty laundry is oh. on my bathroom floor and we've walked around it. We haven't touched it. Okay. Just keep people off of it. Yeah. Just Her most recent dirty laundry, believe it or not, was from the Sunday night. Yes. Or would it be her pajamas? Might be her pajamas. I don't know. But uh, the dress that she wore on the Sunday was in the wash basket at the bottom. And on top of that was all clean clothes. What was the clean clothes doing on top of the dirty washing? That does not make sense to me. Slow down. And just, yeah. Um, and as much as you can, try to avoid crowding the, the front door for, for the dog. Yeah. So that they know where to uh, where to go from. Okay. Just let me know when they're coming. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get. They're gonna call me um, when they're on the way. But just as much as you can, try to keep the scent uh, pretty pretty uh oh, yeah. fresh. There you go. Cool. All right. Um, and another thing, I just wanted to to confirm because um, I know the last night was a long night. Um, but you said you. Uh, you said when you woke up around nine, you left your house at nine thirty for your doctor's appointment, mm -hmm. um, and Stefan hadn't come home yet. Mm -hmm. And then he called you at ten. You at were like ten fifteen, yeah, ten fifteen ish mm -hmm. to say to have the conversation. McDonald's and yeah, she didn't want McDonald's, so he came home. Um, I think he had accidentally left his phone at home. Yeah. So he was just letting me know because I had well, I had called him multiple times. So he was just returning my call going, I'm so sorry. I left the phone at home. I went to the vape store. I waited there for a little bit. Nothing. Um, yeah. Nobody was there. He came back home for a little bit and then went back out to the vape store. And then you, what time did you get home again? Was it around 11? Let me see. I'm going to say around 11, 11, 15. Because I think if I heard you right the first time, you got home at 11 and you and Stefan were both here and then he left to go to the vape store again. I did see him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I just wanted to make sure I had that. Because, like I said, sometimes you forget to write things down, and I don't want to misremember. Um, but okay, that's all I uh, that's all I have for you right now. Um, we're we're still looking. I mean, that's unfortunately the best update I can give you is we're all we're all out. And we're everywhere, um, asking people and looking. And I know your family's also doing the same. So. Um, if you get anything new like that that thing you sent me just a little bit ago that I can look into. Um, just keep on sending them to me, okay? Yeah. Were any of those helpful about the vehicles? There's something for me to look into, um, to look for, for license plate readers and stuff. As of right now, I haven't been able to find anything else or confirm it, but I mean, it's still helpful for me to, in case something else comes across in the future. So, um, just, yeah, if the, if you receive anything else, let me know. But I mean, do know that obviously just like that kid pranked you earlier, um, yeah. because it's so public. Um, you're going to have kids doing that. So, um, don't be too, don't be too scared by it. If, uh, if, if someone does that again. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know when they get here. Four dash one, one, three. Right. Well, that was the first interview she did Tuesday morning. 
Now we're going on to the second interview. Let's see if we get the time on this one. We won three. Today's date is February 27th, 2024. The time is 23.32 hours. Going to speak with Jennifer Soto. What was that time? 22.30 hours. It's a little bit to go that I can too. Um, just keep on sending them to me, okay? Yeah. Were any of those helpful about the vehicles? There's something for me to look into, um, to look for, for license plate readers and stuff. As of right now, I haven't been able to find anything else or confirm it, but I mean, it's still helpful for me to, in case something else comes across in the future. So um, just, yeah, if the, if you receive anything else, let me know. But I mean, do know that obviously, just like that kid pranked you earlier, um, yeah. because it's so public, um, you're going to have kids doing that. So um, don't be too, don't be too scared by it. If, uh, if, if someone does that again. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know when they get here. 4-11. 313. Today's date is February 27th, 2024. The time is 23.32 hours. Gonna speak with Jennifer Soto. Okay, Jennifer. I haven't introduced myself. My name's Myra. 23.32 hours. Cross, wow, that's light up. I'm a detective with the sheriff's office. Do you mind if I talk to you? Do you mind if we talk over there by the car? Thank you. Um, it's fine. Where? Inside the house? In the car. Yeah. Our car? Yeah. Oh, look at the baby. Is, does it lock? Uh, no, no, it should be fine. Okay. Over here, please. Be able to go back home soon? Um, I'll explain it in a second. Okay. okay. I have a question to you before we get started. Um, somebody said something like somebody in here has a gun. Is that a true statement or a false statement? That's a true statement. Okay. Where is this gun at right now? It is upstairs in the guest bedroom. Um, it's not like in any of these cars out here. No, I don't believe so. I think it's upstairs in the guest bedroom. Bedroom number four. It's got a number four on it. Okay. How certain are we of that? As far as I know, the gun is inside upstairs. I haven't heard of it being in the car. The guest bedroom, number four. The room where you sent your daughter to sleep with Stefan on the Sunday night. In bedroom four is where the gun is. Oh yeah, I drew. I. What the hell are you sending your daughter to up to, into a room where there's a gun? And B, 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 B. Why are you sending your daughter upstairs to sleep with a guy? Why? You're evil. Stop again. Just because you wanted a good night's sleep. What about your daughter? She's failing at school. She's falling asleep at school. Right? She's falling asleep at school because she's not getting any sleep. Oh, but don't worry about your daughter and her education. Just worry about getting a good night's sleep, even though you've got the next day off. Okay? Don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, let me just move my purse. If you want to take um. You want to start the car and just give me one second? Yeah. Uh, oh, let me make this. I know it's not the most comfortable. But at least you won't be cold over there. Yeah. I get cold super easy. Yeah, I get I'm the same way, so I understand. Do you want to take a seat right over here? And then she's going to. 
Do you have your keys on you? Yep. Here, have a little closer to this. Sorry, this isn't my car. There we go. Okay, so I'm not sure if he introduced himself, but his name is Luis Acosta. Okay. Uh, we both work for Orange County Sheriff's Office. So I understand um, you spoke with the other guy earlier with Detective Frank. Hunt, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, we have officially taken over the case. Okay. So. Are you guys with Kissimmee? No, we're with Orange County. We're oh. just, it's just a different unit. Oh, okay. Um, what unit are you with? We're with sex crimes. Okay. It's just because of her age and is why we take over. Does that make, I know it's kind of confusing, but like we have like different rules. Um, in Orange County, and depending on like people's age, um, we sometimes take over investigation when it comes to missing persons. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Um. So. Uh, um. When you talked to him earlier, I kind of got like a brief synopsis of what happened. I understand you have a new job. Yes. Okay, and if I say anything that's incorrect, please correct me, okay? You have a new job, and last night you asked them to go sleep upstairs because you wanted to get rest. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, um, what time was this? Do you remember? It doesn't have to be, like, exact time, but, like, just... Oh, and then yesterday she had her... Or Sunday she had her birthday party, right? Sunday she had her birthday party. Okay, what time was that party at? Uh, it started at 3 o'clock. Okay, from 3 to what time? I'm not sure. I wasn't there. I was at work. Oh, okay. You weren't there. Um, but I know my sister was home around uh, 8.30. Uh-huh. Was Stefan here at that time? I'm not sure if he was here at the time, but I think he got here a little bit after. Mm -hmm. And he was like, okay, she was already doing what she was supposed to. She had taken her her nighttime meds mm -hmm. and she was getting uh, ready for bed, like getting taking a shower. She'd mm -hmm. take showers at night. So he's like, okay, she was already on it. Um, I but, didn't get home until, I'm going to say 1030. Okay. And then at 11, I sent them to bed. Did Stefan make it to the party? No. Okay. And then... Once you get here, you said you sent her to bed at 10, at 11. And the following morning, well, let's, I'm sorry, let me backtrack a little bit. You send them upstairs, right? Mm -hmm. How many bedrooms are upstairs? Three. Okay. Where? In bedroom number four. Okay. And what about Stefan? Bedroom number four. Okay. Is it normal for both of them to sleep in the same room? Sometimes. When I, when I really need a good night's sleep, I will send them upstairs. Um, but when, uh, also a lot of times we will sleep together in the king size bed, all mm -hmm. three of us. Or sometimes Stefan will go upstairs and our bed alone. Um, so it just really depends on what's going on that night with our schedules and what we're doing. Okay. Where were you sleeping? Downstairs in the king size bed. Okay. Is is it just you two here or well, you guys have a roommate right we have two roommates and one of the roommates has a son who's here like a little bit more than half the week she so what room no tell the truth jane you sent your daughter upstairs to sleep with a guy a man well you had a great big bed 
right? Why couldn't you just say, Stefan, you sleep up in your up there, and Madeline, you're sleeping with me? Okay, I need a good night's sleep, but that's fine. I'll still get a good night's sleep. But oh no, you send your daughter upstairs to a room with a man. It's okay, she's known for a few years. Okay, give you that. But a man who's been grooming her sexually for years. Hanging to a room where there's a gun. A gun. Do you guys use room number the room downstairs, the master bedroom mm -hmm. downstairs, and room number four? Okay, so last I'm sorry, it's not it wasn't last night, it was the night before. Stefan, right before we go any further, I'd just like to say anyone watching on replay, we're looking at the interviews that Jen Soto gave. Now, wrong to what wrong to. Mm -hmm. We've watched the first two interviews she did with the newsreel. We've watched the two first meetings of the police officers on the night that Maggie went missing. We're now on to the second interview with the sexual crimes unit. Where she goes, okay. I wouldn't be going, okay. Well, I probably would go, okay. Then go, hey, uh, hold on, what sex crimes you it got to do with my child who's missing? What the hell? Why have you took over this case? She's a missing child. Why has sex crimes unit, Orange County sex crimes unit, took over my daughter's missing case? No? Okay. Right, so we're looking at all these interviews and... It's going to be a marathon for meeting Hoy. But um, we've got this interview. Then I've just got the very last one I want you to sit here, listen to. Right. So once this is finished, we'll listen to the last one. And it's not a long one. It's only a short one, really. And it's where I've been tra she's been transported to the press release, the presser on the Wednesday. Right. And it's just... Some chit chat in the car. It's interesting, though. So please stick around for that one. I said the best to last. Bonds slept in bedroom number four and you slept downstairs. Yes. In the master. Okay. Mm -hmm. What time did you wake up? I'm going to say around eight o'clock in the morning. Stefan came into the room and was trying to put the leash on the dog. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere between, I'm going to say somewhere between, he came into the room somewhere between 8 and 8.15. Um, he came in to put the leash on the dog, mm -hmm. and I got up to try to help him because my dog is kind of a nervous dog, and I didn't want him to pee on the bed. Mm -hmm. um, so we wrangled him, put him on his leash, and he said, go back to sleep. And I said, okay. So I laid back and went back to sleep. Okay. I heard people in the kitchen. I'm not sure exactly who was in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I know, I came downstairs to get ready in her. So she's got, um, she's kind of got a bedroom in the living room. If mm -hmm. you go, if you if you go into the apartment, you'll see there's like a one of those fake walls, mm -hmm. um, break separating half the bedroom. She's got like a semi, like a desk with a bedroom and a TV and a dresser. Mm -hmm. But she does, she'll hang out there during the day, but she never sleeps there. She mm -hmm. always sleeps with me and then the rare occasion upstairs. Uh, but m most of the time it's with me. Okay. Did you see her on Monday morning? Visually see her? No. Did you hear her? I heard many people in the kitchen. I'm not sure if it was my roommate or her specifically. Okay. Is your roommate a male or a female? Female. Okay. They're both females. When was the last time you physically saw Wednesday, 11 o'clock? I'm sorry. Sunday, when the, uh, 11 o'clock. Sunday when you sent her to bed. To bed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, and then when you woke up, you said you woke up briefly because Stefan went in there. Did you go back to sleep? Yes. What time did you get up?
sorry I was just doing something in the living room um when she said last time you're seeing us she said Wednesday 11 o'clock then no Sunday 11 o'clock when she went to bed right why would she say Wednesday why would Wednesday pop into her head that's what would um we know she was at the grandmother's on the Friday we know her birthday was on the Thursday right so did she send her to bed at 11 o'clock Wednesday then on Thursday go to her grandmother's and then from there to school and then Friday to her grand back to her grandmother's I just can't understand why Wednesday would pop into her head. There's got to be a reason behind why she would say Wednesday. Why she thinking Wednesday 11 o'clock. That doesn't make sense to me. Let me see if I actually have my alarm set. No, I don't have a specific day on there. Um, let me check something real quick. I'm pretty sure I woke up around 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. And then I left at 9.30. Um, I had, had an appointment. I right? had a doctor's appointment at like 10.15. Uh -huh. But they took a while. And then by the time they did my blood work and whatever, I, I think I got home somewhere between 11 and 11.15. Okay. When you got back, was Stefan here? I'm pretty sure he was, yeah. What was he doing? Uh, just sitting in my room. Um, um, at my computer desk. On his phone. Okay. Pretty sure. Now, why didn't the detective say, pretty sure? Was he or wasn't he? Yes or no? Not pretty sure. It was either there or he wasn't. We're talking about, this is Tuesday evening, we're talking about Monday, the day before love. I know a lot's gone on, but that day will be stuck in my head if my child went missing. The day, if I had a child go missing, I think the day before and the day that she went missing will be stuck in my head for life. I'd know everything that was said, everything that was done, everything I went, everywhere I went, it would be stuck in my head. And yet you're pretty sure. Yes or no? And I, I think the officer should have picked up on that. She should have said, well, was he or wasn't he? Yes or no? What did you guys do? We chatted for a little bit. I asked him what had happened because he had called me earlier mm -hmm. uh, at 10. Let me see. And these answers, she should know because she's already answered all these. Right. In the morning with the detective, she first spoke from to from kissing me, PD. So those answers, those questions are literally the same questions she's being asked again. And yet she's having to think about it more now. In a matter of what? 10, 12 hours, she forgot what she was saying earlier. Pretty sure he called me around ten eighteen. Uh huh. What did he call you for? Um, to let me know. Um, to let me know that he didn't go to McDonald's as planned. He had asked her multiple times if she wanted to stop at McDonald's because that was the plan the night before that they were going to wake up early. Mm -hmm. He was going to take her to McDonald's, do like a special McDonald's breakfast, and then drop her off at school early because she wanted to get there a little early. Um. But on his way to school, she was very sleepy, 
and wanted to sleep in the car. Mm -hmm. And um, she said she did not want to do McDonald's. She just wanted to be dropped off. Okay. Um, also to let me know that uh, he left his phone at home. Because I had called him multiple times and he had picked up. He had left his phone at home uh, by accident. He had went to the vape shop, um, but they didn't open on time. So he wa he had waited for quite a while in front of the vape shop. Um, they didn't open, so he left and came back and we hung out a little bit. And then I think he left again to the vape shop to buy go buy what he needed. Okay. Do you want the name of the vape shop? Um, yes. Um, do you have it at the top of your mind? I'm sure we're, we're going to talk again soon and we'll have more. No, I'm just saying because that might be helpful if you want to see like surveillance or anything. Okay, so at some point, I understand he gets like a flat tire and he's not able to go with you to pick. School, yeah, right, yeah. And when you get to the school, how do you realize that she's she wasn't there? Um. So I left her. I went to go. I usually leave around two thirty to mm -hmm. pick her up. She gets out of school at four. Mm -hmm. So I wait that it takes me about 20, 25 minutes to get to the school, and then I wait about an hour for her to get out. Mm -hmm. Um. I waited the whole time mm -hmm. and then when the bell rang and then it was time for her to come out she wasn't one of the first kids like she normally is mm -hmm. and I realized I was holding up the line because everyone behind me had children mm -hmm. and they needed to get out because I was the first in line um so after about I'm gonna say I think it was like 4 10 she didn't come out and I was holding up the line so I drove away I said Maybe I forgot to tell her that I was picking her up that day because I don't know if she knew that I wasn't working that day. But um, I had assumed that she thought, you know, she knew that I was going to go get her. So because she never came out, I left and I went. Mm -hmm. uh, she lived, she works. Okay, so you hold up the cute, the pickup line. So you pulled the whack. Why didn't you just pull out the school grounds, park up somewhere near to the school, right, we walk, right, and go into the school and find out where your daughter was? Why? That's my, that's that one, just one question that is bugging the life out of me. Why would you not go back into the school and find out where your daughter was? Why wait till, what was it, 5.26 when the teacher actually message, got seen your message? When you messaged him and he replied to you? Did you then think, oh my God, my daughter's not been in school all day? Nearly an hour and a half after she left, Sugar left school is when you realised she hadn't been in school all day. You had your opportunity to get in that school for 10 past four. Pull over somewhere, walk back, walk into the school and ask them where your daughter is. Your daughter's not there, she's not been there all day. Fine, phone the police. Phone the police there and then. They could have been out looking earlier. Okay, you did make several phone calls to the police. And they said they hadn't got a sheriff available because something else has happened and whatever. But the report would have been in a lot earlier than flipping, what, quarter to four, five, five thirty. Less than, I'm going to say it's like a, it's like a three minute drive from the school. Mm -hmm. It's very close. Um, she, she works uh, in the Hunters Creek uh, Villages area. Mm -hmm. I drove that way, and I drove along the path that she would walk, mm -hmm. and I didn't see her. And then office, I asked, hey, has she gotten here yet? They said no. And I said, okay, let me wait a little bit. And um, I, I parked back again 
on Hunter's Vista, Hunter's Park Lane, I think. Mm -hmm. And I waited along that lane to see if I would see her walking. And I didn't see her walking. And it was about 4.30, 4.35. At this point, she should have mm -hmm. So I went back to the office. And then I was like, is she here yet? No, she hasn't gotten here. And I said, okay, hold on. Let me, let me see. I called her best friend. And I was like, hey, uh, are you, I, I, don't, I don't know if I told her I was picking her up from school today or to walk to the office, but I don't see her anywhere. And she goes, no, she never came to school today. She didn't come to first or second period. And I said, what do you mean? We dropped her off close to school. She should have walked to school. She goes, no, she never made it to any of her periods. And I said, can you please check with your other friends in your other classes to see if she ever made it? She got back to me and said, no. At this point, I started to panic mm -hmm. because I realized something was wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, I emailed one of her teachers, a few of her teachers, actually, and one of them responded to me. He said she didn't make it to his, to his period at all. And he checked all her other classes and she didn't make it to school at all. Mm -hmm. Um, that's when I knew something was truly wrong. And I, I'm before that email or after that email. Um, but I started panicking and freaking out mm -hmm. because she should have been to school. She should have made it. And then. I understand she forgot her phone, right? Yeah. Is it common for her to not have her phone? Yes. She's got ADHD. She's super forgetful. She doesn't even... She never realizes that she's in the shower for a whole hour. She loses track of time. She loses... She's very... And then you guys look, went looking for her, right? Yes. Where did you look? Like, did you drive somewhere? Did you walk? Like, where did you go look for her? Okay. So, uh, after her best friend called me, actually... Or I talked to her best friend on the phone. I went back to the school to see. Let me check her official attendance. Let mm -hmm. me see what's going on. Um, they were already closed. Mm -hmm. Nobody was at the school. So I searched by backtracking into the school. Mm -hmm. And then coming back out and seeing that there were no kids at the school at all. So then I drove. office. Everything was driving. And then I think that response from her teacher at that point but um yeah um did you come back to the apartment at any point yesterday once you realized she was missing Stefan was at home uh waiting for us to get back mm -hmm. and then when I told him something was wrong she never made it to school he completely hauled it back to me and then we all stood there waiting for the cops to show up and they didn't show up till like 7 30. Well, it took them a while to respond i think they were looking for other missing kids around the area too um but yeah no we we did not come back home until we were done with the police we were done with everything there was nothing else for us to do except come back where home. was her phone when all of this was happening with me how did you get the phone if you never came back here? I took it with me to go pick her up from school. I was going to give it to her when she got in the car and be like, listen, you forgot your phone again and let her play on it. Uh -huh. uh, I'll do that sometimes when she forgets it. I bring the phone with me and I just give it to her afterwards. Um, but I had brought it with me to go pick her up from school. Okay. And you think phone works where? Um, And then did you at any point um, check her phone out while you had it? Yes. Tell me about that. Okay. Um, actually, I started looking, but I could not concentrate on reading anything. I was too panicked and too worried. I handed the phone to my sister. Mm -hmm. She's the one and my niece. They both started going through her, her texts. I saw her texts. Mm -hmm. Nothing seemed weird. Um, no weird random people. Everyone is someone I was familiar with or had heard about. Mm -hmm. um, they checked her Roblox. They mm -hmm. checked her Discord. I checked her Discord as well. Um, there was nothing, nothing weird. Um, one of the police officers taught me to look at deleted text messages. Mm -hmm. We looked at those as well. They were random text messages deleted. They weren't anything. Do you remember where you were when you were looking at her phone? Uh, yes. 
which is where? Uh, let me see. Is it okay if I call her? Yes. Yeah. I'll get the exact address. And then we'll see she answers. Were you guys, when you guys were looking for her, did you guys keep looking for her in the Hunter's Creek area or somewhere else? Hunter's Creek area. Okay. Did you guys come back here at any point? No. What time did you guys come back home? Oh. Hold on a second. Um, what time did we come back? What time did we come back? That was a very good question. Um, come on, Jen. We're talking, this is Tuesday evening. We're talking about what time you come back from your mother's office, place of work, on Monday evening. You'd already told the detective in the morning, Tuesday morning, of February the 27th, you came home about 9pm. Right? So why are you not remembering this now? Why? As I said, every minute, every... It would be ingrained in my head where I was that day, what time I was there, what time I left, how I got there, was it my car, did someone else drive me, did I drive? Every little movement, everything would be ingrained in my head. Because why? Because I'd be going over those days again and again and again. In my head, what went wrong? Where, what happened? Where was we? You know what I mean? But you can't even remember what time you left your mother's office. You can't even remember the address for your mother's office. Christ's sake, love, you was only there last night. Well, the night before, on the Monday night. I know I'm not good at directions, like, I'm no good at directions, but I'm good at places, names of places. I was going to say it was like somewhere between 8 and 9 o'clock p.m. Did you guys go back out after that? Uh, Stephanie went back out. And this was last night, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Where was after this? Okay, did you leave the house at any point with her phone after this? I don't believe so, no. Okay. Oh. Um, what? Well, I think it's been home all day today, too. It's been home all day today? I'm pretty sure, yeah. What time did the police take her phone? Oh, just kidding, just kidding. Yeah, they, they took it, they took it. I don't have it anymore. Um, what time did he take the phone? Just kidding. Are you serious? Serious? Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, you're not kidding. She wanted to know if she'd been, like, anywhere that day. And if so, did you have her phone with you? Because they've been tracking her movement of that phone. So I've seen exactly where that phone's been going all day long. I've been I've made so many phone calls today and seen so many people today that I was it don't light know. out or dark out? It was light out. It was light out. It was still light. Punch, still to, yeah, it was it was okay. during the daytime. And then her but other than that, her phone was here all day. In the morning, yes. Did you guys take the phone anywhere other than when Detective Hunt took the phone? I think it's been home all day. Yeah, from 
I don't think I left the house with it. Okay. Did Stefan have access to the phone? I'm sorry, I took my medicine, so I feel a little spacey. Um, I think I've had it with me. I think it's been with me. Okay. Did you go through her phone today? Yes. Okay. Where was that at? Here. And what were you looking for at that time? To see if there was anything else. Um, what we couldn't access on Monday night was Roblox. So my niece came over and logged into her Roblox and checked out messages. Um, but then they were also, my sister was also looking for her phone to see if there was anything. Here at the house? Yes. And that was today? Yes. You said, hold on, hold on. Okay, do you, you said that on the Monday you gave the phone to your sister and your, her niece and your niece. And they checked Maggie's phone. They checked Roblox, Discord, and deleted text messages. So why was they logging into her account again today on the Tuesday when they'd already done it on the Monday? Or if they didn't, why didn't you say, we did try to check Roblox, but we couldn't get into it? And then we'd understand why she went into it on the Tuesday. Do you guys have her account information as far as like her iCloud and all that stuff? Uh, or is it just on her phone? I've had a hard time logging into it before when I was trying to get her a new phone. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if I can log in uh, to her iCloud. But I think it's all on her phone. Okay. The reason I'm asking is because the, so like they took the phone and they downloaded it, right? Uh-huh. Um, they can see like if somebody tries to access her accounts and stuff like that. So if you guys do have access to oh. anything. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you guys can refrain from like logging back in. Okay. That's okay? fine. Yeah. So it doesn't look like she, like if, so if she tries to like access her accounts from like somewhere else, that way we can track that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does that make sense what yeah, I'm saying? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, they're asking if you can, you know, just try not logging into any more of her accounts so that when he's going through the phone, it doesn't look like she's trying to log on from somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Um, was there anything else that they wanted us to clarify? Um, did you find the, uh, the address to your... Sorry, let me call her again. Or, or what's the name of it? Oh, if I could remember her business name, I don't know. Um, what kind of business? It's an insurance business. I think Advanced Insurance something group. Um, and then I know that you've been with us for the most part of the day, right? Yes. Um, we have, I want to say maybe like 40 people out here, okay? Between us and Kissimmee. And we're all, you know, going to be working basically overnight and throughout the day tomorrow until we okay tonight um what we're gonna do is i know we already secured your house right we asked everybody to leave so another thing that i'm gonna ask is if you guys um can find somewhere else to stay for the night because we're gonna have Kissimmee out here at your apartment for the rest of the night because the people that come and like take pictures and all that other stuff are not going to respond until the morning. Okay. So nobody can go into the house for the rest of the night. Um, until the house gets, you know, we need to take pictures and do other stuff with the house. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, because you guys have such a big apartment, it's not something that only one person does. Like, we don't do that, right? We have our forensics unit come out. Um, and it's not something that one person can do by herself. So she has to wait until people come in. Because there's, like, they're on call after midnight, right? So she has to wait for the other people to come in in the morning. And then they're all going to come in as a unit and try to, take, you know, get it done as quick as possible. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. I need to go back into the house. Mm-hmm. I have medication that I have to take mm-hmm. in order to be like normal. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a possibility that I can go back in there and get my meds? Yes. Give me um, a few minutes and then we'll try to figure out um, how we can get your medication. Okay. But that's something that we can definitely get. Okay. Does is is does it make sense what I'm telling you? Yes. Yes. Um, I just don't know what we're gonna do about finding a place to go. But okay. Uh, and then out. because last in Stefan's car, we're also gonna tow his car. Okay. 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 Do you have any questions about anything that I'm telling you? Okay, so from now on, it'll probably be me getting a, getting in touch with you, okay? Not Detective Hunt. Okay? Okay. Do you understand everything that we discussed? Yeah. Okay. Can I get your direct number? Yes. Job address, if I remember correctly, is 13550. 13550. Village Park Lane. Suite 125. Okay. In, in Orlando, Florida. That's in, um, in Hunter's Creek. Hunter's Creek, right? Yeah. Okay. Village Park Drive, is it? Yes. Yeah. In 13550. Yes. Is that like an apartment complex? It's a build a business building? I don't know. It's a, a building with a lot of business and offices inside. And when did you say you were there? I got there around four well see, I left and came back. So four forty five. Um I got there and I think I and I stayed until they had left. Were you there today? <laughs> Is there any phone would be anywhere near that area today? No. Be here. Okay. So just because I physically am not here, don't think that we're not physically working on this. There's we have a lot of people in our unit, right? So we're taking like shifts. And then the people from, we have violent crimes out here as well. Um, and they're here till four in the morning. So I don't want you to think that like, just because I'm leaving that we're not still actively working on this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like they are here till four in the morning. And then the day shift people that also work violent crimes come in around that same time. So they're gonna take over. So like we have like people working till a certain time and then other people coming and taking over, okay? Um, so like I said, just because I physically am not here doesn't mean that we're not still working on something. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Real quick, I don't remember if uh, Detective Tagler asked, um, but yesterday when you guys were out looking, do you remember what time you were out looking to? So yesterday, um, my, I stayed in the office. My family went out searching. Which office? Uh, one three, one three five five. Yeah. You, you stayed until what time? I'm gonna say somewhere between eight and nine o'clock. I left and then I came here. Came home. You came straight here. Yeah. Um, and then who was out? Your your family was out. Uh, yeah, but I think they all stopped when. Actually, I'm not sure. One of my uncles might have kept searching along the trail. But I'm not sure until what time he was out. My dad as well. What about Stefan? Stefan went out sometime in the middle of the night and um, went searching, uh, cruising around to see if he could figure out where she might be. What car was he driving? My car. Was anybody driving Stefan's car? Uh, no, just Stefan. And what time was he out? I have no idea. I, I fell asleep. 
but I know he drove my car because when I got into it, I said, oh, the the the, the seat's adjusted. Did you drive my car? He goes, yeah, remember I said I was going to take a drive tonight to go search for her because he does have like insomnia. He, he can't sleep at night sometimes. And especially like, that's what's going on right now. Um, but I'm not sure what time he must, uh, he, he may have come in or out. But if you guys look at my gate clicker, uh -huh. you need that to come in the front gate. Uh -huh. You can see what time he, he, he may have come in and out. Okay. Um, I don't think I have anything else for you. We're going to clear some things with Stefan. Unless he went out the back way. Because I don't think you need the gate clicker for the back way. And then I will let you know before I hit up. Okay. Okay. Do you have everything you said today is true? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. That's the end of that one. Right. But the final one is the best one. Because the final one is um, where, oh God, I've got to find it first, where she um, talks casually to this police officer as they're being took to the press release. Right, so... Oh, I'm going to do it this way. Right, because um, sometimes when a person's more relaxed and you're talking about, you just chit-chatting about the weather, the dog, the cat. Right. Um... You do, you seem to get more information. All right. All right, I'm just trying to think. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, God, where is it? I know it's here somewhere. It's in one of the videos, you know. Uh, which one would it be? Is it this one? I'm going to ask if I'm right. Jennifer Soto to Central Operations. misremember um but okay that's all i uh still helpful for me to in case something else comes across in the are you the nissan over there yeah oh cool i'm right next to you yeah. yes this is the one right and this is credit to grizzly true crimes again I've not watched all the interview, I just want this one bit of it. Right? And is it already been shared? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So we'll get it up and we'll get it running. As I said, this isn't long, but it's interesting the things you hear. And it can be very hard to hear at some times. Right, so if you've got ear pieces or headphones, you might be better to wear them. I was wearing the head my ear pieces earlier, and I heard it a lot better. So here we go. Buckle up again. This is our last video of the night that we're going to be listening to. Okay. I will let it run as it is, because she shows some pictures of what the... Uh, that I've released. That's your thing? Yeah, that, that's uh, that piece of junk. <laughs> okay, when do, you get, when do you get a really nice upgrade? Hey. 
Now, this was on Wednesday when they did the press release. And I, I won't play the press release tonight because I have kept you here already three hours, over three hours. So, thank you for being here. I really do appreciate you all being here. So, we will get on with this, okay? Start without us? Um, it will, we'll probably get there in time. <coughs> I love how she's so worried about the press starting without them. What about your daughter? What about being worried about your daughter? City life? Try to live that city life. Work in an office, party at night. That was exhausting, and honestly, I, I did not like it. I just like going home and going to sleep. Yeah, it wasn't for you. No, uh, I didn't. I did not like the commute, the subway. I mean, I you know, I lived in New York, so I, I was used to subways and buses and all that stuff. But um, would you actually have to do it every day for work? That was pretty exhausting. So the subway is kind of my pet peeve. Uh, I can't stand the idea of being you know, a foot away from someone that I don't know, you know, um, for an extended period of time, because I didn't realize just how crowded they were until I took one for the first time. And it's like person, person, person standing yeah, in front all, of you, person standing behind and you. And you're all sharing the same pole. So like dirty hands. Oh yeah. There's one person. It's just like yeah. stacking hands. So I, uh, I've never, never been a fan. I've never been yeah. a fan at all. Did you guys get any sleep last night? I think I went to bed around 3, 30, 4 o'clock, and then I woke up around 8 or 9. Or 9. I had some good sleep then, Jen. Anyone notice this up the corner? There might be a better view of it later. Right. It was, I did... It was, well, um, so I can't remember what we're calling it. Bless, bless, bless. It's a little bit no, while we're waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we. Uh, I, yeah, I'm sorry to make you wait so long. I really was on the way out here. And no, then, it's okay. Like if you guys had leads, I don't, I don't give a shit. Like I don't care. <laughs> there like... is. See, and it's actually on charge. <laughs> it's a, uh, I believe they call it flesh. F L E S, H, light. Googly. Because you guys gotta be doing, and it seems like you are. So. Yeah, no, we uh, we didn't. Uh, we uh, I went home for a couple hours uh, just because I had to sleep, but you know, came back out. And this is the only thing anyone's working on right now, so this is our this is important. Anxiety keeps my brain circling, just wondering where is she? Is she okay? I hope she's fine. Like, I just, I just want my baby back. I yeah, just want her back. it's natural. I mean, that's that's 
just about the only rational way to be. Yeah. You message. I uh, see so you've been getting bombarded by the uh, by the the news media and reporters. How are they getting your number? Uh, I think my family and my friends. So on the first day, my family and friends made like flyers and put my phone number on it. Ah, uh, okay. That's and then wrong. also they all reached out to the news media to try to get the attention. And I don't know if they gave them my number or what, but. Probably. Or I mean, there's probably, they probably just looked it up online. It's surprisingly easy. Sometimes. Yeah, I'm like, I haven't, I haven't directly contacted any news station. I don't think. No, just kidding. Just Fox 35. And I did that like on the first night, uh, like right after we got home and like we reported her missing. Yeah. I called that night, but they needed more information from the police. But I think that was the only place I called. And then everyone else uh, started calling me. So I'm just feeling super overwhelmed with all these messages. And I, you know, they all want to meet up or interview or do this or that. And I've just been pushing it off because I wasn't home. I didn't want to do anything at the hotel. Well, I saw you did one interview, right? Because I think I saw you on the news last night. Yeah. I did, I think, three on-camera interviews. Um, But, you know, there's not for today. I've only seen two on-camera interviews. The, The other interviews were on the Monday night when the police first met you. And was taking the details down of her missing. I've only seen two news reels, interviews. Hey, there's not much else for me to say. There hasn't been more information. I'm not going to find out until whatever happens to the press release. So, well, you know, I think I spoke with uh, I spoke with Stephanie. Is that um, and Stephanie had expressed to me earlier just that she was feeling, uh, I guess, helpless. You know, like y'all, y'all have done so much. You know, your whole family has been. Uh, has been so like uh, active and looking for her and yeah. making the flyers, making phone calls, and drawing this attention. But um, but um, yeah, so at a certain point, you know, it's like you've done everything that you can do, and it's natural to just kind of feel like you know, yeah, like you have to depend on now us to kind of do our thing, you know. Yeah, everyone, we were talking about like what he's saying, love was. Back off. Back off. Let us do our job. Okay? Like, possibly... Oh, I guess that's something we wanted to throw by you. Or maybe I already did. I'm not sure. Maybe. But, uh... No. No. This is a picture I love. I love this picture. Tell you why. Mainly because this picture was taken when they went in on the Wednesday. When forensics went in. Now, they always take photos of everything first. Right before they remove anything, they take photos of the room and everything. Right? Now, I believe this is Jen's room. Right? Now, my room isn't tidy. But my bed is made every day. Right, my washing is in a basket if need be, or hung, hang, or I'm hanging it up. So if it's sitting in a basket, to be hung up. Right, and it is generally tidied every day. The beds made, everything, curtains opened, you name it. She's always having a go at Maggie about the state of her little area that she was given. Right. About not keeping it tidy, not putting your washing away, not picking up dirty washing, not doing this, not doing that. And look at her room. Look at her room. Right? So, a bit hypocritical, I think. A search party thing, but we didn't want to get in the way of you guys, and you guys have already scoured the woods multiple times, so, like, that's the only place I would think of searching, right? Um, so, I don't... We're not, we don't want to do that. Uh, I think we're talking about like maybe posting like a, a vigil of some sort or something just to. Mm, okay. I'm not sure. We're just trying to get some attention. Some. Yeah. 
eyes on, on her face. Or oh, yeah. Speaking of woods, so you mentioned to me that you, Stephanie, and her used to go hiking in St. Cloud. So, just, me, just me and her. Me and her and actually my sister. Oh, okay. So you used to go down to St. Cloud. So yeah. Do you remember where you went? Uh, Lake, Lake Lizzie Preserve. It's about 35 minutes off of 192. It's past St. Cloud uh, a little bit before Harmony. Oh, so that's way, way south. Yeah. Got it. It's like probably, that's like what, two hours? An hour from your house? No, 35 minutes. Oh, only 35 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I just, I know that would be hard for to get to yeah i don't think she would even remember how to get there it's been it's been at least over a year and a half since we did that hike but it was just you and your sister and her yeah and the kids yeah but, yeah that was just another thing i was thinking maybe if that was somewhere that she uh somewhere that she may have uh may have gone before. Interesting, most of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, She's talking about how they're going to the press release and how she's in one car, Stefan's in the in another car, and the, his father's following in his car. And she st- said something like, "Stefan's in the other car because that's a a bigger car, so it's got more space." No love, no. They wanted you separated, separated. Right, so they could talk to you on your own without each other being there. Right, now this is an interesting picture I like because when I was watching Grizzly the other night, we were talking about these sliding doors. And someone said, no, they're just windows. No, it's a sliding door. You can see the sliding doors, right? Because you can come out into the patio. Anyway. This area inside here is where Madeline, Madeline's bedroom was. So she had a dresser there and a TV unit and whatever, right? Now, I'm, I'm not sure where I heard this, but I heard that apparently, I think it was one of the roommates, heard like a bumping noise, like something being moved, but thought it was down to the neighbours. Could it have been Stefan moving this unit that's in front of this window out of the way so then he could come out of this door round here to where his car would, right, like the forensics van there. But his car's normally parked here, round about here, where the forensics van is. Right? Simple. 
to come out of these doors right round, out the way of any cameras, straight to your car. And you had to do it before, you had to move her before, but, uh, hang on. I'm trying to find the time. Uh, what time? Sunrise was at 6.47am. So we had to do it. Whatever happened, happened between 11pm Sunday night and 6.47am Monday morning. So I'm wondering, did, was it the, the housemates heard him moving some furniture around to get her out of his doors to his car rather than coming out of the door and round? Right? He's come through there and round. Makes sense. How's the rest of the family holding up? Um, as good as possible. They're all uh, getting ready in front of the TV or pulling up Facebook Live to see if they could see the press conference. Uh, they just thought that I would find out what's happening first before the press would, but I guess I'm finding out at the same time as everyone else. Yeah, I mean, I've told you everything. I've told you basically everything I know. Um, they're probably not going to they're probably not going to disclose in my experience a press oh he knows a lot more he knows a lot more love but he can't tell you that he can't tell you that he knows a lot more plus by getting you and Stefan going at that um thing gives him a chance to but he doesn't get arrested till on the night time, on the Wednesday night. Restaurant conferences, they don't disclose nearly as much as people think they will. Um, and I, this is the same thing I told Look. Stephanie earlier. It's just kind of the nature of See? our job. It's the nature of resources we use. We can't reveal some of our methods just because that can be used later by bad people. Or right, and that there is the mother's bedroom. Yeah. to exploit that so um i don't know what they're going to release i'm not the one doing it um they may ask specific questions that warrant different responses um information that maybe i don't know but um but um yeah you know, well, i'll leave there too so i think it's funny you know everyone thinks that you know everyone thinks that we all know kind of collective information that sometimes we go to these press conferences and we work, you know, stuff like, I don't know, told me that. Yeah. I will one night do that, show that interview, that press release. Right. I don't think there's much there to see, but we'll go over it, okay? You said uh, Stefan got a job up in North Fork, right? Uh, so his dad works for a real estate company. And I guess had um, had been told that they were going to offer Stefan a job as a project manager or, or like a junior project manager on a show. Look, look at her. That. That's her bedroom there. How can she have any privacy? How can she concentrate on doing her school work when you've probably got people sitting here watching TV or sitting at the table eating? How can she sit there and do her school work? And concentrate. She can't. It's actually like they're going to teach him the ropes kind of thing, like a, an apprenticeship. 
and that fell through. Yeah. Um, so it ended up never happening. Oh no. That's nice. Yeah. So is he just what's he? I mean, he lives down there, right? Yeah, he lives. No, 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 sweetheart. He went back to his mummy and daddy's because his daddy wasn't paying the six hundred pound a month no more for him to sleep in that room. Why? Because he wasn't working. He was scrounging, as usual, off his parents. He wasn't working. He wasn't contributing to your household. He wasn't contributing to his mother's household. What does he do down there now? I mean, is he... He's just stuff? hanging out with his parents. Okay. Um, I think he's looking for a job locally. Um, but in reality, we're just waiting for him to be able... He's got to wait a specific amount of time for him to reapply back at Disney where he used to work. Oh, he, he used to work at, uh, I think yes. he said, Epcot? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, so he wanted uh, to go back. He wants to go back. Um, but I think we have to wait, like, about six months from, from when he resigned. Uh... So we're waiting for that to can get so he can get his job back. Um, and in the meantime, he, he just over here in this corner by this little green monster thing is uh, like a what to do list sort of thing. But see how they've just thrown everything of, of hers on her bed, the blankets of hers on the bed. Now the mother was at home, okay, she's 13, but what is the harm in her mother going in and just tidying up her area for her, just to help her out a bit? She wasn't doing anything Monday, she had a doctor's appointment, she cancelled one doctor's appointment in the afternoon because she couldn't afford it, because they have to pay for it over there, right? So she cancelled that, and... Then she come home and sat there and done nothing. It wouldn't have took long to tidy her room up for her. I used to do my kids' bedrooms. Hang on, the old dad. So, right, there's black bag day. I'm going upstairs. And I'm not joking as soon as I got, <laughs> got that black bag out. They was up them stairs, tidying up their rooms. Has to get something down there to be able to save up to come up here because I can't afford to... I'm disabled. I work part time. Like, um, I don't make that much money. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I didn't know his uh, his dad. He was a uh, was an Orange County deputy at one point. Yeah, back He worked then. for us way back when. Yeah. Cool. He's a nice guy. Um, how were they? Uh, how were his parents doing? Stefan mentioned that they might be. So she says she only works part time. So what's that? Fifteen, sixteen hours a week. And it's just too tired, and her daughter had to go and sleep in the bed upstairs. Right. He, he said something about they were sick a little while ago, or they were ill, or they weren't doing so well at one point. Um, I don't know if I may have misheard. I don't know, I don't know, about, I don't know if they were not doing well with illness. I know they were struggling financially. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so they might not have not been doing well that way. I may have misheard. Um, I thought he said something about them being elderly and not as active and needing his help kind of thing. That's true. That They're very old. His, his mom is super old. And... Oh, I love that. Her, his mom is super old. You know what I mean? Yes, but they've got all their faculties there. They've got all their faculties. They're not decrepit. They don't know what day it is and what month it is or what whatever they know what they're doing and they know what they're saying um, very ill she's very you know that's her she's a very heavy woman and like uh, her health is just not the yeah. best she's had like, so many surgeries and like had complications from her surgery she's very like mentally she's not like where she used to be she gets it's very lost. She gets very confused sometimes. And it's just like, um... I didn't know if he, like, moved down there to help them or, you know, kind of keep them comfortable or if they were, you know. I just, he, he had mentioned them briefly and so it was cool getting to meet him because he talks very highly of his dad. Yeah, so that's a really nice guy. They, 
they've always they've always treated me like family and like when I met them you know I kind of had a strange relationship with my family so they like took us in yeah. they loved on us yeah they are they really are it so. sounds like your family is His family, his mother and father, didn't like you. Why? Oh, yeah, because she was vaping that, uh, not lethal weed, but you are vaping what you can get medically. Yes, we know about that, Jen. And forgive me if this is a personal question, but I just wanted to verify it with you. If I didn't. I had heard a couple different things, and it's so funny when you talk to so many people over the course of a short period of time. Everyone, you see how everyone kind of sees things a little bit differently sometimes. And so that was just one thing I had to clarify with you. Like even very childish too. He loves playing video games. He loves playing board games. That is his buddy. That's who his partner is when, when he, and he loves hobbies also. He's a very big hobby goer. So every time he, he discovers a new game or a new hobby, he gets sucked in and involved and want to play as well. And they were always playing. I would watch. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't into the games. They can <laughs> But you watch, you know, you yeah. enjoy them enjoying it, right? Yeah. Some board games, I love playing with them. Some of them, you know, they don't, they don't play that. Um, but that was, they were each other's buddy. Um, Has it changed at all as, as the years have gone on? Have they gotten any less close as she's come to be like a teenager? No. If anything, closer ever since he moved away because now we, from, you know, as soon as we get home or a little bit afterwards, we'll FaceTime him and we'll be on FaceTime all day. All day just talking or bullshitting or keeping each other company. Sometimes not even talking. Sometimes I'll be on my phone messing around and he'll be busy on his computer doing something, but we're just keeping each other company. He would be around for that as well. Not maybe this time, but uh, Google Duo or Meet, whatever it's called. Oh yeah, yeah, for Androids. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you've ever had any concerns about uh, about um, about Stefan. You know him really well. You've never had any. You've never seen anything wrong with each other, right? No. If anything, like for the first few years, I was hyper vigilant as hell mm-hmm. because I was just like, never trust a man. I don't care who it is. Never trust anyone. Not even my dad, right? Like never I trust agree anyone. With you. Um, sleepovers, and I'm like, no, absolutely not, mm-hmm. because. I have no control and something could really happen. Yeah, um, that's a dangerous world. Yeah, so, um, I was very vigilant of, for the first few years of how he would interact with her and what he would do, and I would question if anything was weird, but nothing ever was truly weird. I'm just like, okay. Um, I even had her old for the longest time, um, with him uh, as in if, if he were to sleep in the guest bedroom upstairs mm-hmm. and I would say no you guys should hang out and do whatever but sleeping you're sleeping with me understandable um just because even 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 if I've known him for seven years I the idea of of course it would be already went out a little girl sleeping with a man that's not her dad uh, it sounds weird but um so I I haven't um I trusted him enough to even to, to let that even happen that night, you know? Yeah. I mean, is it is it common? Because I know you said you would never let him in the past, but is it common to let her sleep up with him or let them spend a lot of time in them together? Uh, I think... Can someone explain to me? This is Maggie's room, right? Magdalene's room. 
Right, he's got the cat climbing bed and whatever in there. Here's a wasp basket. At the bottom, if you zoom, if you can get this picture and you can zoom in, you can tell that's her dress that she wore on the Sunday. Why are these boxes here? Why are these boxes in over on the hanging over on her wasp, wasp basket? Why? You know what I mean? Seeing his boxes be up in his room. Why are they down here? It makes me wonder if whatever was going on. Why? Right? Now this is even sicker if it's the case. If if what was going on was happening down here in this room, this area. Because if it was upstairs, don't you think maybe the uh, roommates would have heard something, but not downstairs so much? But if it's downstairs, be behind this wall, behind this wall here, is her mother's bedroom. And you're telling me she never heard anything going on. Why are his boxes there? Why? I think I'm, I'm going to say I've let them sleep together less, less than what I can count on these two hands. Okay. Not, not much. Um, but a lot of the times it was just the three of us sleeping together on my bed too. Um, the back out of the wolf too, my he, like, he just kicks and like sprawls and like only so many people right <laughs> and what's funny is even on a king bed if it's just me and her she'll start off on one corner of the bed and i'll be on the other and then when i wake up she is on top of me and she's, like <laughs> way past the middle like next to me touching me and i'm just like how did you how did this happen how did you this is a big bed yeah <laughs> well she loves me that's why yeah <laughs> but i would wake up feeling like oh my god i'm on the corner you know, some kids are like that, though. Some uh, some kids just can't get close enough to, even if even when they start developing their like teenage attitude and the, the hormones start raging a little bit, then uh, then uh, some kids just can't, you know, get close enough to their friends because they just they love you that much. Yeah, um, I would like to think that that's the case. She never liked being alone. She never liked sleeping alone. Ever since she was a baby, like I tried sleep training her and that was a complete failure. Um, I just had to learn that she had to sleep with me and she wanted to be with me all the time. So like even now, like I hope she's not alone. I mean, or I hope I don't know, she's being taken care of or she's safe. I, I just I don't know. Like I don't know. I don't know. How was her, uh, I don't think I asked you, or I may have not asked you very much, but how was her party on Sunday? Um, so I wasn't there, I was working. Okay. But from yeah, what I was told, she had an amazing time. My entire family was there. Oh, Stefan. Yeah, uh, Stefan was working. Oh, yeah. I thought I already mentioned something about her asking at the party. Like maybe I was mistaken. No, uh, he was on his way here from Northport, Florida, uh, during the party. Uh, okay. And he got, oh, so he would have gotten here like Sunday night. Yeah. Gotcha. She went home around 8.30, and I think Stefan walked into the house about 10 minutes later uh, and made sure that he was to, which was take her meds and get in the shower and get ready for bed. Yeah. Um, so when I got home back from work, um, she had already showered, she had taken her meds, she, she was getting ready, she was ready. I gotcha. Yeah, no, I, I thought I'd heard him say something about her, like, singing a song that night or introducing her to a new movie or something. Yes, she started singing. So she's in chorus. She's got such a beautiful voice. Now, what we see here on the screen was in a book of Madeline's Maddies. And I was trying to figure out, was it Madeline? Who wrote this or her mother? Now I reckon it was her mother. But I don't know, it's got my fluctuate 
fluctuating moods, anxiety, and trauma related symptoms affected my memory, concentration, focus, and energy levels. I also have secure, sec, severe trauma responses when I encounter males. Well, we know that if she wrote this, we know when I encounter males, that last bit, I also have secure, severe trauma responses when I encounter males. Well, that's a load of like BS. Right? And someone said, this is how you write. You know when you're writing for your disability awards and whatever, this is how you put write it down. And it is true, that is how you put it. Right? But this last bit, I also have severe trauma responses when I encounter males. But it could also mean a daughter. She had fluctuating, fluctuate, fluctuating moods, anxiety and trauma related symptoms affect my memory, concentration, focus and energy levels. She had no concentration. Her concentration was zero, focus was zero, and her energy levels were zero because she's always falling asleep at school. I, I also have severe trauma responses when I encounter males. Could that be her, with her way of saying that Stefan, if it was her? But I think it was the mother who wrote that. And it's probably just so much she just grabbed a book, writing something down first before you fill it in on the form. Um, she was singing, practicing one of her chorus songs and stuff with her, and he's like, wow, you have such a beautiful voice. Let's watch, I think, Sister Act. Sister Act, yeah. 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 So we started, we wanted to watch a movie about singing, and she liked it. Um, but we didn't finish the whole thing. I have not seen Sister Act. Yeah, I think it's When he mentioned it, I confused it with the. Uh, I was thinking I that I only saw the film as well. Seven twenty three. Yeah, completely different. I know. Yeah. Yeah, thirty three oh five. Thirty three oh five. Why is all this on the big like that? Why have you just put all this stuff on the bed like that? Like, it's a petty dust and a spread of the name of the family grown at the public. Uh, when you look at the east side, red hat, the heart is all black and then signal your eating a sandwich and drink. No one has been confronted in the need of particular. Black is all the same. You can see you have to allow the judge to retire for your appointment. Oh, okay. And what is, uh, or what did um, Stefan do at Epcot? He worked in attractions. So he worked on the Soren ride and the journey into imagination with Figment ride. Uh, we'll use our police privilege. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's cool. I, uh, my, um, my girlfriend worked for Disney for a long time. She was a, she was a character performer, uh, uh, the ones in the costumes. Yeah. Yeah. She said apparently that's like a big deal there. Yeah, it is. Um, you make, it's crazy how you can just be in, in a costume and you can make so many people so happy. Um, my sister used to be a character performer as well. She was like making Mimi, Donald, Daisy, all the Lilo Stitch, the, the short. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. But she's, I think she said she had to quit because Donald, she kept getting Donald Duck and his butt was really heavy and kept hurting <laughs> her back. She was really having a lot of back pain, so she had to quit. <laughs> now that you say it, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I didn't know they were so stringent with uh, who they let uh, be character performers, though. She was saying, like, you have to fit a height requirement, a weight requirement. You have to learn choreographies, and 
um, all these mannerisms. Yeah, North Bay one. Learn all the different signatures yeah, for every, sure. every character. So, to be a prince, you have to be like six foot something. You have to be taller than all the princesses. <laughs> Crazy. Dash one one three one three. Today's date is February twenty seventh. Right, that's the end of that interview. Right, what I found intriguing in that is they were talking about when they would they would go up in their own bedroom and whatever, but she was doing a bit of backpedaling. Like, well, not that often. It was only, you know what I mean. It doesn't matter. Once is once too often. She was a young girl. She should not have been in a room with him or in any space with him on the night time alone. Right? At all. And I really do believe she knew something was going on. She had to. She had to know because that's just sick. And the fact that she was trying to have their sex toys and whatever isn't, what was it she said? Something like about the sex toys and whatever isn't, uh, isn't evil. Uh, when you've got sex toys around a 13-year-old, yes. You know what I mean? Lock them up. Put them in a drawer. Put them in a... Somewhere away from kids. They don't need to see all that. They don't. Right? Um, but what got me is the fact that his boxes were on her wash basket. Why are his boxes on her wash basket for? That's what makes me think a lot of it was happening downstairs. Right? And not up in the room. I do believe it happened, some some of it may have happened up in the bedroom, but I think a lot some of the times it happened in that area in the living room. So and the fact that when they showed her these pictures when they had her at the police station. After they arrested him, they got her at the police station and, and she didn't believe him. And they so showed him, they showed her certain pictures. And she said, I don't recognise that. And one of them had his face in it. You know what I mean? And then afterwards, she comes out and she phones her, her father up, his father up and says, I think you, you need to get a solicitor because he's been grooming my daughter for two years. Two years, love. Since the age of eight, he's been grooming her, if not younger, if not seven. And I think on that Sunday, she said no. He probably didn't like the fact that she got a, a crush on someone else. She wasn't having it no more. You know what I mean? She got used to him not being there on a regular basis, on a daily basis. So the thought of him being there for the next week must have been terrifying for her. And then there's this poem, which we're going to look at. I haven't got the poem, but someone has on their page. And I, I will look at that poem one night. And it's the last verse that gets me. The last verse. Actually, I'll see if I can pull it up now. Let's have a look. Let's see what I can get. Um, no. 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 Uh, 
Okay, so on this one. Let's just see if it's on this one. Because this YouTube has got the photos as well. Right, but I just want to show you the one. So, let's see if it opens up for me. Right. Oh, God's sake. No, I can't find it. I will find it and um, you'll see it then. But it's the last verse that gets me. And it's a poem that he wrote. And we're not sure if he wrote it, if it was in a finding her school bag or what. But a shoe, a one shoe, right? Listen to this, this is the weird thing. When they found her school bag, they found a laptop in it, right? A shoe and her inhaler. Something her mother never mentioned in any of those interviews how asthmatic as she suffered with asthma. Right? We've watched those interviews tonight and not once did she mention how her daughter uses an inhaler. Not once. Why is that? Right? And, um... When they found the bag, they had the one white crock in there, shoe in there, a laptop in Hayla. I don't know what else. Right, and it was covered in, and I think it was paint. And I think he covered it with paint, spilt paint all over it, to hide the scent from the dogs. Because you know paint's got that strong odour, hasn't it? Right, so I think he may have been trying to hide the scent from the dogs. The other croc, right, the other white croc, was in her mother's bedroom in the corner where the dog would lie. Which meant when they, after they carried her out, right, the dog may have picked up one of the crocs and ran off with it. They panicked, couldn't find it, so just put the other crock in the bag. Or he just done that and then got rid of the bag. But it just seems odd that there's one white crock in her mum's bedroom where the dog lies. Bit weird. Anyway, let me know your opinions on this because I think there's no way she did not know that something was going on. Not on this heavenly earth. Does she know? Nothing. Right? She's been groomed from a young age not to say anything. Right? And I do say, I heard ages ago, years and years ago, right? If a child's being abused by someone, yeah? People, someone said, why would the child go to the abuser rather than say, say it's a mother and the husband, or the mother and father, and the mother and partner. And it was the partner who was abusing the child. 
why would the child go to the abuser and not the mother? Why? Because the child wants to keep that the abuser happy. Go to him. Look, she loves me. You know what I mean? I couldn't hurt her. She loves me. Why would she come to me if I hurt her? It's because they want to keep the abuser happy. So she probably did put on a, uh, a firearm, a face, like around her mum when she was up there, when Stefan was there, you know what I mean? But when her mum wasn't there, it's like, I don't want him around me, I don't like him here. He's weird, I don't like him. He makes me feel uncomfortable. How does he make you feel uncomfortable? Well, he's just there. What do you mean he's just there? She, I think she, I don't think the teacher at this counsellor at the school had the time to actually probe into all this. You know what I mean? It's not like when you go for sessions, right? And then, and then next time you go for a session, they start talking and you can say, well, when you say last, you mentioned that he was weird and you felt uncomfortable around him. Would you like to talk about that a bit more? What made you feel like that? So they can pick up on it. But I think a school counsellor doesn't have that time to keep track of what they were saying. She keeps track mentally. Maybe in her notes, I always spoke about how he's weird, how she felt comfortable. But she sees other children and she's not like a counsellor that can spend an hour or more with a client. And some counsellors see their clients sometimes two or three times a week. So I'm not putting the school counsellor down. I asked once, because when I was learning, doing the counselling course, I said, why don't we have counsellors in schools? You know what they told us? They said, if they have a school counsellor, then it opens the door to all the other professions. Like, I don't know, the, uh, men, uh, the a nurse for, the, uh, for other cases, you know what I mean? It opens the door for all these other uh, doctors to come into the school. So they don't want that. And I went, but it can, it's good to have a school counsellor where someone can come to, a child can come to you and talk to them. But they won't do it in, in the UK schools, they won't allow it. Which is sad. Because I think if they did, we wouldn't have so many cases like we do over here in the UK of child neglect, child abuse. Go on notice for years and they only notice it when the child's been killed. And that's sad. That is really, really sad. Anyway, let me know what your opinions are on this. Thank you for being here with me tonight. And it's been a long one. It's been four hours, so it's been a long one tonight. So I'll see you all tomorrow. I'm not sure. I think I'll be going about Sebastian Rogers tomorrow because I've got a lot of work I want to do during the day as well on uh, Stefan Stearns. I'm looking at getting a timeline together of where he went and what times and all that lot. So I'm looking, I'll be looking over that interview he does with the police tomorrow, try and get that timeline from there and try and find a police timeline that they've told the police have got of him. Try and find that and put a timeline together and map it. So then we can sit here one night and go over the map and go like, we went from there to there, from there to there, from there to, you know what I mean? So we can get a better look at what he did on from the Sunday to the Monday when he got back or when he found out about Madeline being missing. Right? So, and actually, even after Madeline went missing, we're going to get a timeline. So, Thank you all again for being here. If you're watching on replay, 
Thank you again for watching this. I am hope you stay to the end to watch that last bit. Uh, I know it's been a long one tonight. It's been a long one for me. I've got to go to bed. And I will see you all tomorrow night. So until then, stay safe.